That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. The World Television Championship, a title that was vacated by Tommaso Ciampa due to injury. Brian Cage is now the defending champion, and here we go. The Miz not showing any fear in getting in the face of the big man. Elbow and collar tie up right here, and Cage solidifying his dominance right on. And oh, he takes him down into the corner. Oh, and a knee to the side of the skull. Maurice looked a little shocked at that, but can you really be surprised at the dominance of Ryan Cage? Okay, sends him into the corner. One more time. Oh, and a European uppercut. Maurice. Proving the distraction right here. Smart strategy for the Miz, whether you love it or not. Oh, looking to take this one, looking to steal this one right here to become a new world television champion. No, only a one. <laughs> a one, and the Miz cannot believe it, but he's going to have to shake it off and try to fight. Oh, wait, 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 wait. He got him. Oh, and a floater suplex. He just folded him up like a little loaf of bread with that exploded suplex oh and now he has him up in his clutches again oh and a knee to the side of the to the side into the power slam well ladies and gentlemen i can now provide a medical update on roman reigns following that attack early at the start of the broadcast he slightly agitated his separated shoulder during the scuffle but he has since left the arena along with his family to avoid further conflict and i'm pretty sure the miz wish he could avoid further conflict with that military press slam and now the miz might have some more conflict. What does Cage have in mind here? Oh, and a drop kick. The machine proving that he is not just a big man, that he can do a lot if he wants to. Oh. No, oh, he just slammed him off the barricade. I don't think the Miz had a, a right strategy for this one. Because Brian Cage has been dominating this match with Miz barely getting any amount of offense in. Cage has him up. Cage. F5. The F5 has flattened the Miz and has flattened his chances of becoming TV champion on this night. As Brian Cage is still the TV champion. This man has been world champion in damn near every promotion and he's been in and for a, the second night in a row, Brian Cage has made it known that he will damn near be impossible to beat and now he has added motivation with the TV title. As mentioned, Miz barely got any offense. He snuck in a roll-up after a brief distraction from his wife, Maurice. But other than that, Cage dominated the former Intercontinental Champion and capped it off with that F5 to retain his spot as TV Champion. And the machine continues to dominate here in the WWE just after being in this company for 48 hours. Alexander, with the guidance of Teddy Long, Xavier Wilson to avenge his former tag team partner here we go this is a match that i never thought i would see if i'm being honest with you oh it's cedric making xavier wait xavier was here to avenge his fallen friend or at least start the process he's his end game is to finally face apollo cruz for what he did and make him pay for what he did to kofi kingston hitting a suplex driver on the concrete Will saying, I'll wait. And now Cedric Alexander finally going through. Will saying, come on, bring it on. And oh, and a leaping lariat with a kip up. Cedric Alexander invested into his future. And now, knife edge chop form for Peter Knife edge chop. And now he wants to make sure that he has not overlooked anymore. And, and Will's had him blocked. Now repeated. Now he's unleashing a frenzy. On a man who left him laying with a lumbar check and a brain buster. Owen Woods has him tumbling to the oh now a knee. Trying to keep up with his action. Both of these men are trying their best to, to stay in this fight, but at the same time unleash a frenzy. Oh no 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 no. Oh and a Samoan drop by Woods. Ooh, to the back of the head, it looked like, like he connected to the side of the face. 
Cedric Alexander was not expecting that. And now, and a backbreaker, a knee to the small of the back. Here's the cover. We're going to put this one away and ironically looking at Teddy Long while he's doing it. Only a one. Like our champion, Cedric Alexander has the backing of an entire corporation. But Xavier, however, has no one as he has been on the search for former world champion Big E Langston all week. But to no avail, but he availed with that super kick. But he can't focus on that right now. He needs to focus on Alexander just like he's doing right now. And now, looking to take... He might want to take that arm off is what I'm being honest with you. And then he further proved my point while he snapped it down shoulder. To the second rope once again. Looking for a fist to the face. But Woods had a very well scouting him. What a drop kick to the face. Alexander stomping at Xavier Woods here. And now Woods. Oh, and he plants him. Alexander plants him. And now he has him up into the mission. No good driver. Here's the cover. Teddy Long is in press two and three. No. Was kicked out, but he might not. That might not be smart because Cedric Alexander is not pleased with that kick out. And now he's now he's focused. Teddy Long saying, "Don't light up. Don't let up one bit." Oh, float him over into the five miscarry takedown. And now Woods going for the eat defeat. The eat defeat. This is all she wrote right here. Jessica Carr in perfect position to count the fall. Three. No. What? Woods can't believe Cedric Alexander kicked out of the eat defeat. He's going to have to stay on him if he wants to put this one away. What a match these two have been putting on so far. Oh, Sir Alexander had it very well scouted. And now he has him up. And he plants him. But he's not done. He's not done. Split like into the moon salt. And he added some sauce to that elbow drop. Sir Alexander. Done messing around. Teddy Long says finish it. And he's going to do just that. Pop him up into the cutter. What a night it has been. We're still to hear from Daniel Bryan. And we're still to hear no, from Bianca Belair as Cedric Alexander plants Xavier Woods. He's not going for the cover because Alexander, Alexander has him in his clutches. Lumbar check. Cedric Alexander has won his first match as a member of the Beatdown Corporation. Xavier tried his best. But Cedric Alexander invested into his future, as I mentioned, with the BDC. He even kicked out of the eat defeat. Was his signature maneuver. But the same way he left him laying last week, at the same way he picked up the win tonight. As you saw, Xavier was, and that's what I mentioned right there. He kicked out of the eat defeat. Something that Cedric Alexander, excuse me, Xavier Woods did not expect to happen. But Woods was not expecting Cedric Alexander to, to bring everything he had and that's what I'm talking about right there the lumbar check knees to the back of the spine but that lumbar check in the end for Woods and with this win the CEO of Beatdown Corporation Mark Henry has to be smiling from ear to ear at their headquarters and wait wait a minute speaking of the street profits I was wondering who Teddy Long was motioning to Montez Ford Angelo Dawkins the street profits because of them attacking the Usos last week, the Undisputed Era are the new tag team champions. As Angelo Dawkins just plants Xavier Woods with that spine buster sending a message. Attacking Woods while he's down. No one is here to help Xavier Woods. Frog splash from four. The frog splash from Montez Ford. No one's here to, to help. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. The former tag team champions, the Usos, are here. And all hell is breaking loose. As Alexander and Teddy Long are hightailing it out of here. Four, and I believe that's Jay Uso. Oh, the ball is spilled to the outside. Dawkins and Jimmy. Dawkins and Jimmy. Oh, face first off of the ring post. The brawl. And all hell is breaking loose, ladies and gentlemen, here on Monday Night Carnage. 
Oh, this, oh, jeez. Kick to the skull. These two want revenge for these two costing them the tag team titles last week. Oh, Montez Ford. Not playing around. Oh, Jay was not expecting. Oh, bouncing them off the steel steps. We're going to need some mortar right here, ladies and gentlemen. But I doubt that it's going to happen anytime soon. Teddy Long and Cedric Alexander have high-tailed it out of here. They sick. The Street Profits on Xavier Woods and the Usos are, are coming to even the odds because they have found respect. Oh, Jesus. What the? Face first off the wing post. Angelo Dawkins is not about to be stood up. Uso. He has him very well scouted. Oh, what the hell? Where did Apollo Crews come from? The Usos came to the aid of Xavier Woods, the man they came to respect over the years. Crews picking his spot and striking when they least expected and connected with the Crews' control. The spin out power bomb. Oh, they're not done. Dawkins again connects with a spine buster. New Souls was not expecting this disadvantage. They had a they had they had a kind heart when they wanted to come to the aid of Xavier Woods. And now Apollo Cruz just taunting Woods. No doubt this was a setup for Woods interrupting his championship celebration just last week. And now he has to deal. Well it looked like a three-on-one situation there. What? Whoa! He's here! Biggie Langston is here. We haven't heard from him in over a week. And he's here with a look of rage in his eyes. And if AIs could tell a story, Cruz would be that of fear because Big E is storming towards the ring. We was not expecting Big E to be here at all. And Apollo Cruz looks a little scared, I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, he snatched off his jacket in gorilla position because he's not here to talk. Montez Ford is standing between a bull and his feast. Spear! Biggie just tore Montez Ford apart. And now he has his eyes fixed on a WWE World Heavyweight Champion as Angelo Dawkins. Dawkins looks a little bit... He's going to check on his tag team partner and it looks like Apollo Crews wants nothing to do with Big E again as he picks his spot on this one. The beatdown corporations are in retreat right here. Are we looking at some sort of reunion between Woods and Langston? He has proven me wrong. As I've said, Cage is going to have to watch out for O'Reilly and Fish lurking at ringside. Cage, Cole, two for the TV championship to close us out here on Carnage. And here we go. Brian Cage telling Adam Cole, bring it on. You, you've had their time to prepare. Both men have had their time to prepare. Two weeks to be exact. Who will strike first and now? Oh, it looks like Adam Cole is not going to to do it just yet he's going to take his time he's going to force cage to wait but he has to the count of 10 to get back in if he doesn't he, i'm pretty sure he does not want to lose this match on a count out he is simply playing mind games with the swivel ring oh uh, adam cole as cage was had enough he was going out to meet him but cole once again playing games with the TV champion oh and Cage oh Cage cold once again playing cat and mouse with the big man you gotta expect this is gonna happen from Adam Cole because he is known to play my games and all oh, like cold cold oh and a thumb to the eyes Looking to blind cage. 
Cole taking advantage, playing games. Oh, but he, it did not work that way. But oh, his cage connects with a fist to the face. He sidestepped that, that missile drop kick. And now Cage, whoa, Cage! Standing moves up and looking into the eyes of Bobby Fish as he makes the count. And three, no, only a two. What the hell did we just see Brian Cage do? A man his size should not be flipping, but he is going to keep proving every doubter wrong. Get to the midsection. And a rocket kick. Speaking of Roderick Strong, a man who's come, become known and famous for using that rocket kick. Will Captain Cole lose to that same move? No, only a two. Oh, Cage is going probably for a discus clothesline, but Adam Cole had it very well scouted. And now a jump breaker has the big man down. Adam Cole done playing games. He's, he was playing his mind games at first, but now he knows he's going to be on his game because he was that close to losing. And now as he, as he buries the face of Cage in, under his knee. And now Adam Cole. Oh, and a shot, to, a slap to the face to disrespect. That slap might have just pissed off the machine as he is eyeing Adam Cole saying, yo, what are you going to do? That's what he's going to do to loop that press, followed up by those theories of punches. The machine is done playing these games with Adam Cole. Cole is going to have to do a lot more if he wants to. Oh, he sends him halfway across the ring. Oh, the bicycle kick. As I just, and that's what I was alluding to earlier, Kyle O'Reilly in the face of Brian Cage. At some point in the official, and that was a little distraction to get him down. Two. New TV champion right here. No, only a two. At some point, the official is going to have to force him to either stay off that ring apron or get ejected from ringside. Oh, and he takes. Cage looking to eject Adam Cole's skull from his body. And now, Cage switching it up into the front slam. And once again, at Kyle O'Reilly in the face of Brian Cage. Cage is going to have to, going to have to ignore him and just keep his eye on the prize. And that's what he's going to do. But oh wait, Cole slips out and the shot to the back of the head. And now Cole, it look like, that, it look like these shots are just pissing off Brian Cage. Oh, he has him right there to the outside. Heat sinker. The Heat Seeker connects. Are we looking at a new TV champion right here? Two and three. No, only a two. What a match that's been so far. Adam Cole playing mind games with the big man. Has him in serious trouble. Oh, super kick. Cole with the super kick into the Florida Keys. The straight jacket German to the big man. New TV champion right here. No. Adam Cole pacing, trying to figure out what he's got to do. I think I know what you got to do. Kick to the knee. Cole, Cole, last shot. Last shot. We have a new team. Oh, what the hell? Cal Callahan. Sammy Callahan is back. Sammy Callahan is back. Sit out, pile driver to Bobby Fish. Callahan just took out Kyle O'Reilly with a bat before taking out Fish. And Cole is frozen in shock or fear at that visual. He was, no one was expecting this. I wasn't even expecting this. Oh, and again, again. Sit out, pile driver to O'Reilly this time. Callahan is shouting at Cole that it is far from over between them two. Oh, wait, Cage is back up. Cage is back up. FM5. F and five to Adam Cole. All this chaos just cost Adam Cole as Brian Cage is still the world television champion. Cage defeated Adam Cole to retain the world TV title here tonight on Monday Night Carnage. And right, oh, what the hell? Speak of the devil. Roderick Strong is here as well. Getting payback for what Cage did to him last week. That might be easier said than done as Cage has his claws on Strong and once again lays him out with the F and 5. 
Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pile driver by Callahan to the TV champion. No one is safe from this deranged lunatic. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Adam Cole, Undisputed Era, and now Brian Cage have all felt the venom of the Callahan death machine. What a night it has been. Thank you so much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you on the next edition of Mo What the hell? T Tommaso Ciampa! Ciampa's back! Ciampa's back and he's going after the man who left him unconscious in the parking lot. All those boots are going and he re responds with a boot, a knee to the face. Callahan forced him to relinquish the TV championship due to injury and now Tommaso Ciampa is back and Callahan trying to fight on a super kick. I thought we were done but I was sadly mistaken and Tommaso Ciampa is pissed off for revenge. Oh, Champa. Callahan just fo fo forced the outcome of this match. I'm so tongue-tied because I'm excited that the Psycho Killer is back. Oh, Champa. Look at the eyes. And on Callahan not taking the wrath of Champa anymore. The Psycho Killer is back. Who will? survive to the aid of the likes of Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn during the Survival Series tournament and during their their no disqualification match against Jake Hager without uttering a single word and to this day I've been wondering why he's coming to their aid and what happened to sanity and so oh, wait a minute Jake Hager Jake Hager taking with that it looked like he had a double axe to the back of the head Jake Hager attacking Killian Dane before he can even get to the ring you have to know this is Chris Jericho's deal to begin with as Hager unleashes. But no, Killian Dane is not playing around as he takes him. He looks like he's trying to take his head clean off. Killian Dane has been attacking Hager and Jericho for weeks before we started WWE Monday Night Carnage. And it looks like that is not going to stop just yet. Oh, no, 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 oh, my God. Killian Dane just tossed Jake Hager from the stage to the concrete. We need some help out here for Hager. Chris Jericho is beside himself. Oh my God. And now the Battle Royal begins. Medical staff have made their way to Hager. And as I try to keep my best to keep up with all the action, eight men competing. And it looks like, oh, Killian Dane immediately went for Chris Jericho, who without a doubt was responsible. Was responsible for that attack happening. Oh, Chris Jericho fighting back. Oh, Jericho has eliminated Killian Dane. The Beast might be done in this match, but after what he did to Jake Hager, his issues with Chris Jericho is far from over. We are down to seven. As the winner of this match will face Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental Championship at Joker's Wild. Mission Uncle Driver from Chris Jericho. I saw that from a mile away. Oh, and it looked like it was a leaping... European uppercut from from Cesaro to Jack Gable, and it looks like Tyler Bate has been eliminated by AJ Styles. We are down to six, and it looks like Zack Ryder is looking to take advantage of AJ Styles being distracted with Tyler Bate, but no, that is not going to happen. As it looks like Chad Gable has eliminated Chris Jericho. You might not like the group he's associated with, but Gable has been very impressive against the likes of Triple H. And that, much to the shock of Chris Jericho, he doesn't care who your name is. He's a man on a mission. We are down to five. Oh, it looked like Cesaro was going for another European double cup, but it looked like... Oh, and a kick to the back of the head from Andrade Cienamas to Zack Ryder. I thought Chad Gable was going to be helped by Zack Ryder, but it looks like that little agreement has unfolded, and I'm not against it. AJ Styles targeting Cesaro right here, but no, Cesaro said, nah, we're about to do it my way with that leaping, that avalanche European uppercut. I'm just in awe at the power of Cesaro as it looked like Andrade was going for a power bomb, but Andrade was not prepared for Cesaro, but Cesaro was not prepared for AJ Styles. He's looking to take out that knee. 
But can you just enjoy the fact that the rebellion is just unfolding at our very eyes? And I'm all for it. AJ bought that forearm from Cesaro. AJ, oh, looking for the pump handle slam. Nope, Cesaro shifted his body weight and caused him to crash to the mat. Oh, and another avalanche European uppercut. Oh, and look like Cesaro has Ryder in his clutches. He has him up. Oh, no, 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 no. Power bomb to the outside. Zack Ryder has been eliminated. We are now down to the final four. Gable, Andrade, AJ Styles, and Cesaro. Winner faces Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental Championship. This has been a fast-paced battle royal. We are down to the final four. Gable and Amos, Cesaro, and AJ Styles. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Gable has eliminated Andrade. That's two elim eliminations for the Olympian. We are now down to the final three. Two former world champions in Cesaro and his Styles and the Rebellions. Chad Gable looked like Gable was about to eliminate Cesaro right there, but no. Clip of the knee from Cesaro. The Swiss. Oh, sends him, but Gable holds on. Oh, Gable has been eliminated. Cesaro has eliminated Chad Gable with that bicycle kick. We are now down to the Swiss cyborg and the phenomenal one. Winner will face Jeff Hardy at WWE Joker's Wild for the title. Who will strike first? And that will be AJ, but Cesaro had a back elbow for his troubles. And now AJ down to one knee. Cesaro. Oh, and a European uppercut. The Swiss is not playing around like he want to eliminate him right there. The strength of Cesaro, but AJ is trying his best to hold on. He does not want to pass up on the opportunity to face Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental title. And the, oh, strike to the knee. To the knee that he targeted earlier. And now AJ, oh, caught with that European uppercut. Oh. Cesaro was possibly looking to scoop him up and eliminate him, but AJ had him very well scouted. Oh, AJ is about to eliminate him. Nope. Cesaro said, nah. Belly to belly overthrow. Cesaro is on a mission right now. He wants one more crack at Jeff Hardy, but so does AJ Styles. Oh, this might be it right here. Cesaro has him up. Neutralizer. Cesaro connects with the neutralizer. And now, looking to eliminate him, but no, AJ not he's, he's trying to resist went for that back fist but cesaro cesaro oh aj styles is eliminated cesaro wins cesaro wins cesaro is going to joker's wild the former world heavyweight champion gambled by entering this battle royal and he hit the jackpot he has one more opportunity at jeff hardy with the added caveat the intercontinental championship is on the line this battle royal was a one for the records. We saw betrayals within the rebellion. Jericho eliminated Killian Dane and hats off to Chad Gable for making it to the final three, but it came down to Cesaro and AJ Styles. And Styles put up one hell of a fight, but he could not keep up with Cesaro, who connected with a neutralizer. And despite some initial resistance, Cesaro overpowered Styles and tossed him from the battle royal. WWE Joker's Wild continues to shape up to be quite the show when we finally touch down in Las Vegas. Cesaro versus Hardy. Lights have been turned off. No graphics needed because this is unsanctioned. There are no rules, no restrictions. The winner will be decided in the center of that ring as Sammy Callahan makes his way to the ring for a fight that here. Uh oh. Oh man. Champa. Champa. He's not waiting around for his entrance. He's ready for a fight as he takes out Callahan straight out the back. One fall to the finish in the center of the ring. No rules, no restriction. We have no graphics for this, no lights. We don't have our usual official for this as Champa takes out Callahan with that knee. We don't have our usual in-ring official for this one because this one is not sanctioned by the WWE. This one needs to end between these two. Uh-oh. Champ Callahan tried to block that superplex, but no, it was not enough as Champa connected with a suplex on the ramp. Tommaso Champa is fired up as we get this unsanctioned match underway right there on the stage. I want a net breaker to the, oh jeez. He has not been medically clear as Sammy Callahan after having his face driven face first on the concrete, on the exposed concrete. 
ringside just last week after he attacked Sammy, excuse me, Tommaso Ciampa. Ended that TV title just last week. And our medical staff tried to get Sammy cleared, but Callahan kept attacking everyone, and WWE said, you know what, screw it. This will be unsanctioned, no rules. It will not be on the record books for either man. This just has to end between the two. Oh, Champa said, let's go for a tour of the house. Oh, this fight is spilling back to the gorilla position. And here we are, Champa and Callahan. The fight is spilling all the way all over this arena. Hopefully, people have cleared out this building because nothing and no one will stop them from tearing each other apart. Uh oh. Callahan is in some trouble. Champa, power bomb! A power bomb, and Champa says, You asked for this boy. A power bomb through the table. Callahan in some serious trouble. But as I said, this is not false count anywhere. The pinfall must happen in the center of that ring. And both of these men are not letting up as oh Callahan takes off Champa's head with that bicycle kick. Oh, Callahan sends him right backstage. The official trying to talk some sense into both men, but that is not possible. Both of these men are not normal. Oh, and he slams them on the concrete floor. Champa just now returning from injury. This might not be smart strategy coming back. Oh! Callahan used that look like a shelving to take off Champa's head. And he's about to do a lot more as he sends him over there near the production crates. As I mentioned, Callahan and Champa, these two men hate each other. Callahan, I don't even know why he really targeted Tommaso Champa the way he did, forcing him to relinquish the World Television Championship. Oh, and he sends him again into the into production crates. As referee Mike trying to absorb uh, Callahan said there's only one room for one lunatic in this place. Oh, come on. How disrespectful. Talking about Champa's own daughter. And Champa is not having that one bit as Tommaso Champa connects with another knee to the face. I will say he, he shouldn't hit the face, but Callahan is not exactly a pretty sight to see. As the fight continues. Oh, look like Champa is done. Oh, he sends him crashing through the, through the door. And it looks like he's about to head back out this way. And as they do, the fight continues to spill. And Tommaso Champa said Callahan does not know who he's messing with. And I have to concur on that notion alone. Uh oh, Champa, Champa about to take him to school with the Project Champa on the outside. The double knees to the spine. Usually he will go for the pin, but that does not matter because the pinfall can only happen inside the ring. That's the only rule for an unsanctioned match. The pinfall cannot happen anywhere else but inside. The square circle as he bounces them off. It looks like that grilling that holds up the LED lights and keeps the crowd separate from the, from the stage. The fight continues into the sold out crowd here for those who remain at the conclusion of the quote unquote show. What a night it has been here on Monday Night Carnage as this is not sanctioned by the WWE whatsoever. Callahan and Champa, this has to end between the two as Champa continues to fight with Callahan on the outside as he continues to wail in knees and fists to the face. And Callahan, is, it looked like he's just taking it. He's just absorbing every hit because Callahan is not normal. And another forearm has Callahan rocked from a world champion wherever he has gone. He has faced the likes of Adam Cole here in the WWE. And it looks like Champa is about to make sure he's the last one. Oh, God. That Larry just had him flip upside down. And what? Callahan is up. How the hell is he up? How the hell is this man still standing? First, he had his face driven into the concrete just last week. And now he is up, still fighting in his unsanctioned match. Use the hashtag unsanctioned match in the comment section if you're watching this on demand to discuss this brutal war between the draw and the psycho killer. 
No Callahan. What does he have in mind? And a lariat as he takes Champa's head clean off. I have no idea what either of these men are thinking. So whatever they're doing, I have to just go with it. Oh, and Callahan with a shot. It looked like he connected a little bit on the, on the chin of Tommaso Champa, but it doesn't matter to Callahan as he's unleashing a steel chair assault on Sammy Callahan right now as our final stop on the road to WWE Jokers while in a super kick as Champa is rocked into the production crate on the other, oh God, bouncing face first. Oh, he has a steel chair again. Oh, and a shot to the men's section. Champa, oh, and a DDT on the, on the steel chair. WWE Jokers Wild comes your way. Three stages of hell will be headlining as Alistair Black battles Triple H in a personal war. And it looked like Champa was blocking a casualty of his own with that, oh, and he takes him off and he plants him. It looks like something, look like that steel chair, that steel, oh, child. Trying to find out how Callahan has been busted open again as Tommaso Ciampa unleashes an assault with that bat. Yeah, it looks like Callahan was busted off. It looked like he's, his forehead scraped that steel trash can. And it looks like Ciampa sees blood and he's about to continue his assault on Callahan as he can again bounces him off that production crate. Callahan is rocked. Oh, and he has a steel chair again. Oh, and a shot to the back of the head. Tommaso Ciampa is feeling it. Sammy Callahan mentioned his family. He mentioned his daughter. And he is pissed off even further than he already was. Callahan is the reason he had to relinquish the TV title in the first place. And he cost him his chance to get it back just last week. And now Callahan is done playing around. Oh, Callahan, is, the fight has spilled back, and he bounces him off the steel steps. What a war we have seen, and it looks like we have finally made our way to ringside as this war was, has spilled all over the place. If you're just now tuning in, the fight was in the backstage in gorilla position. It was in the locker room area, in the interview era, area. It doesn't matter. These men will tear this place apart, which is why this match is not sanctioned whatsoever. Mainly because Callahan is not medically cleared after having his face caved in. Oh, it like Champa go for a pile driver. But no, Callahan bounces him off and presses him off like he's a lightweight. And now it looks like Callahan has him in his position for a power bomb. But no, wait, he's changing his tune. Oh, no, 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 no. Power bomb on the steel steps. Callahan is unleashing. A forensic strike on Tommaso Ciampa's back. And now it looks like Callahan is not done whatsoever. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, face first. Into the LED post since Callahan said it is, ain't over until he says it's over. What more can these two do to each other? Oh, he bounces them off face first again. It looked like a little revenge from last week because Callahan was bounced off that same LED post just last week by Champa before having his face driven into that concrete. And now we are back inside the ring. Well, I shouldn't even say back because this is the first time both of these men have been inside the ring and it might be the last time for Champa. Oh, what a power driver! A cactus special! And this special will be over for Tommaso Champa as Callahan looking to put this one away right here on the A2 as it looks like Champa was busted open as well. This has turned into a bloody war. Oh, it's Callahan unleashing closed fist on an open wound. And he's not done. He is not done. Hopefully Champa's wife and daughter is not looking at this one because this I couldn't I couldn't look at it if I was his family. Champa is a deranged lunatic, and so is Sammy Callahan. This is a battle of the lunatics. Callahan has something in mind with those steel steps as he is methodically just walking around as he knows he has Tommaso Ciampa right where he wants him. Callahan was not expecting Ciampa to kick out 
Oh no, it looks like he's going for another power bomb on his steel steps. And it looks like Chumaso Champa wants to fight out as he's oh it's close fist to the open wound of Champa has him rocked. And another leaping knee. Yo, Tommaso Ciampa unleashing a fury of strikes. And it looked like he opened that wound just a little bit more. As this bloody exchange between these two knife edge chops and slaps to the face as Callahan is rocked in the corner. And another knife edge chop has Callahan rocked. And another. Oh, Ciampa, what is he going for? And another Larry and folding him inside out. Champa said it is over. And Callahan, he has him right in where he wants him. Oh, and he has the steel chair, the steel steps, excuse me. Oh, and he bounces it off the skull of Tommaso Champa. What award has this been, ladies and gentlemen? Unsanctioned, no graphics, no lights, nothing, no fanfare. Not even our, our official ring official. This is referee Mike. What a night it has been. We have a new world television champion as Champa. He's just trying to figure out what he wants to do with those steel steps. Zack Ryder defeated Brian Cage with some assistance from the Rebellion. And it looks like Champa. Oh, no, 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 Champa. Oh, and it looked like his leg just bounced it. It bounced off the steel steps. And it looks like Champa is about to make him pay with the, with the bad knees, the clover leaf with the knee to the back of the head, to the spine, as Tommaso Ciampa wants Callahan to submit and call him daddy. But Callahan is not about to go down without a fight even further. I don't know how much more these two men can do. Oh, no, 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 no. Butterfly DDT, the same move that Ciampa hit. But last, time, last week it was on top of a limo. But this time in the center of the ring, Callahan looking to have Tommaso Ciampa's number, no. As Champa kicked out that bloody face of Ch Callahan is not believing what he's seeing. Tommaso Champa's not going down without a fight even more. You're gonna have to kill him to beat him. Oh, I can't wait for this Sunday, but I can't I I don't know how much I can take for this unsanctioned match. What does Callahan have in store? Oh, and he plants him with the spine buster. Champa rolls to the outside. Oh, Callahan at the top. The Soda crowd don't know what they're witnessing. Tommaso Champa. Oh, he got out of the way of this one. And now Champa. Champa wrestles him down to the mat. Oh, and he has the Fujiwara armbar. The armbar. Referee telling Champa that he got to do it in the middle of the ring. It won't count out here. But Champa doesn't really give a damn. He wants to break the arm of Sammy Callahan for putting his hands on the head of the household. Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, Callahan found a way to slip out of that one. Callahan has Ciampa right where he wants him. And another bicycle kick. The pump kick on the outside took Ciampa's head clean off. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't you do it. Oh, wait. I thought he was going for the Cactus Special again, but Champa had that very well scouted, and another knee! It looked like his head bounced off that, the steel steps, and it looks like Champa is done playing games as he sends Sammy Callahan in the center of that ring. What a war this unsanctioned match has been. Oh, Champa, Champa sending him to school once again with the Project Champa! Yeah, Rent Stu, you son of a bitch. Champa ain't done. Kick to the midsection one more time. Project Champa for a third time. Champa, he's feeling different. Kick to the midsection. We all know what's next. Fairy tale ending. Daddy's come home as Champa shoots the half, and Champa has defeated Sammy Callahan. Believe it or not, as he raises the title belt to signal what this is all about, Cesaro defends against Keith Lee. Boston better be ready because we are.
underway. The workhorse title is at stake in this one. Cesaro not showing any fear, neither is Keith Lee, as this sold-out crowd continues to bask in Lee's glory. Oh, Cesaro went for a, a swing and, and a miss. Lee had that block, and now he has Cesaro down to a knee, and the knife fest chopping Keith Lee, showing Cesaro that he is not a normal man, just like he isn't. Repeated shots in the mid-session, shot to the face, and now Lee sending the champion halfway across the ring. Oh, see, oh, it, it looked like he was going for the spirit bomb early, but Cesaro had that very well scouted with that DDT. And now Cesaro has, has the challenger rocked in the corner. Repeated shots, repeated, repeated fists. And now Cesaro with another uppercut. This man is a different breed. And now the strength of Cesaro with a wrist lock, belly to back suplex. This crowd here in Boston don't know who to get behind. Who do you get behind? Those who are watching live. As Cesaro connects with the Boston Crab. And now Lee, the strength of Lee, as he is carrying this man. He is in the face of Mike Kyoto telling him not to ring the bell. The Boston Crab is cinched in as Cesaro is Lee going to give it up here. Is he going to reach the bottom rope? And he does. Mike Kyoto forces Cesaro to break the hold, which is smart. He had the count of five, but Cesaro said, I'm not going to do it like that. He's going to give him a chance to recover. But Lee knows he's in for a fight. As Cesaro continues to unleash a fury on Keith Lee. Oh, my God. A neck trap suplex. Cesaro, like I said, is a different breed. The strength of Cesaro is on display as he unleashes. Oh, he's going for it again. And he goes up for it again. Another rip headlock suplex. Cesaro wants to make sure his reign as Intercontinental Champion does not last only 24 hours. But Keith Lee wants to make sure that that is just the case as he took his head off with that lariat. Lee in the corner and Keith Lee saying, Cesaro, you're going to have to bring it all. Bring your entire A game as he bounces him off the rope. Oh, and now he tackles him down, Lee is not playing around. He wants that Intercontinental Championship. Defeated the former champion at an NXT live event, the last live event. Oh, what is Lee going for? Lee, Lee, look out for Lee, bounce! Oh my God! He just folded him up like an accordion. Monty Brown has to be proud of that pounce. And now Lee about to pounce him this way with the spirit bomb. Cesaro, he is in some serious trouble. That spirit bomb has put a lot of people away. And now Cesaro into the corner. And Lee flattens him again. Jeff Hardy is not probably not. Oh, oh, oh. Cesaro. Cesaro not, will not be denied with that kip up. And now Lee, he went for a shot. Cesaro, oh my God, what a European uppercut by the champion. The strength of this man is out of this world. And now Cesaro possibly going for the neutralizer, but Lee changed his tune and sends him crashing. What can you do to this man? Oh no, oh no. Oh, the same move he did last night, bit back, oh what the hell? No. Cesaro with a blackout on Lee. Come on, Seth Rollins. No doubt on the oars of Jeff Hardy he has interrupted this match. Blackout on the champion. Lee has Cesaro scouted. Oh, come on. Lee has Cesaro scouted and connected with the Big Bang catastrophe. And I thought we had a new champion, but Seth Rollins made sure that wasn't happening. Oh, no. Speaking of the devil, Jeff Hardy. The self-proclaimed Antichrist is here with a chair. Cesaro is busted up. He is busted open. Oh my God! Chair shot to the skull. Oh, come on. This was starting to be a banger of a match, but Jeff Hardy and the Order had other intentions. Oh my God, not again.
Jeff Hardy's claiming Keith Lee is one of the roadblocks. And now he must be eradicated. Twist of hate. Oh, come on, not again. You already done the damage. This man is out with another twist of fate. The champion has to be, he has to be seeing stars with that twist of fate. With the steel chair and the blackout. Oh, now Hardy, swanton bomb on Cesaro. Jeff Hardy wants his title back. And just like he did the last time he lost it, he will stop at nothing to reclaim it back. The Order is on a mission and have this scary feeling that they are just getting started. From behind, from behind, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins attacking Keith Lee. Where the hell did he even come from? Lee is not about to go down without a fight though. And there you see Mike Kyoto in the ring. And wait, there's the bell. Is this, is this an official match right now? Yes, Paul Heyman just sent me word that this match has been made official even though Keith Lee is not dressed to compete. He is, however, dressed for a fight as he plants Seth Rollins. He just confirmed to, with the official that this match is official and the official, which is Mike Kyoto, said that it is and now it's Keith Lee versus Seth Rollins in an impromptu match. Revenge for what happened last week at the conclusion of the show. Seth Rollins interfered and cost Keith Lee the Intercontinental title as Keith Lee had connected with the Big Bang Catastrophe. Seth Rollins out of nowhere hit the blackout. Will he be able to do it again this time as Rollins has the advantage this, this go round? Seth Rollins has Lee but Lee brushed him off like, like he was a fly that you want to squish and now he's about to try to squish him right now as revenge for what happened last week. As I mentioned, Cesaro is not here. He was not scheduled to be here as he suffered a concussion during that attack. Oh, wait. Seth Rollins might suffer a loss of breath. Oh, my God. Lee pouncing Seth Rollins out of his boots. Keep Lee screaming at Jeff Hardy that he is a roadblock that will not be eradicated easily. Well, now Lee scoops him over his shoulder and walks around as if he's a trophy into the power slam. And now Lee looking to put this one away right here with a victory over Seth Rollins in our main event of the broadcast. And now he kicked out just in the nick of time. Seth Rollins is probably trying to recover from being pounced from to and fro from Kingdom Come until here. And now Lee looking. Uh-oh. Keith Lee has him up. Superplex! Lee connected with the Superplex, and now the Limitless One will make sure that Seth Rollins bask in his glory. Oh, he rolls through. Oh, and he takes him out. He landed on his knee. Sling Blade! What a night it has been. Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan have qualified for the Royal Rumble, and now Rollins kicked it, had him down to a knee, and now a DDT. MVP is now the CEO of Beatdown Corporation, overthrowing Mark Henry. And now, cross flies, but nobody home. Holy. Oh, what a, what a chop. It even caused Mike Kyoto to flinch. Because nobody expected Keith Lee to have this type of power and dominance. Holy. Jeff Hardy has to be looking on and saying, what did I get my, his, I don't even know what to call him, his right hand man Seth Rollins into as he planted neatly with that net breaker. And now Rollins is going to try again. No, he switched it up into the elbow drop. Now looking to put this one away. Here's one, here's two, a win over Keith Lee right here. No, Keith Lee got the show up just in time. And now Rollins, oh, what a super kick. Oh, Seth, he has that look in his eyes. Rollins has that look, that twisted look. He's setting up Lee for the move he used to cause him the IC title last week, the blackout. Wait, what? He pounced up and caught him. Spirit bomb. What the hell? Keith Lee just brushed off the blackout. 
and switched it into the spirit bomb. And just like that, Keith Lee has defeated a former WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Keith Lee came out here looking for a fight and he got it. And I can't believe Lee popped out. He popped out of the blackout and caught Rollins and transitioned him into, you'll see it right here. He transitioned him into the spirit bomb. He is truly limitless. Cesaro is at home looking at someone who is guaranteed not finished vying for the IC title. Keith Lee with a dominant win over the order. Seth Rollins in convincing fashion. And now Keith Lee continues to celebrate here in this sold-out crowd here in New York City. And wait a minute. Jeff Hardy, he's here. Hardy has his chair. Oh, but Lee saw it coming and blocked it. No, oh, Hardy giving Lee a, a two for the price of one. Oh no. The toll man is always nearby. Saido suplex by Carry On Cross. The order's mission is clear. Jeff Hardy wants the Intercontinental Championship back. And whether the champion is at 100% or not, the Antichrist will make certain the toll has been paid. Oh, but he's not done. He's not done with Lee. Seth Rollins on the outside recovering from that incredible showing of Keith Lee, but he's not, that's not the story. Twist of hate. The order stands tall again. And it has held championships all over the world in various promotions, but I kind of don't like his odds. It's Baron and Stroman in final Rumble qualifying match of the evening, and here we go. Senior referee Mike Kyoto is your official for this main event. Many people will consider Barrett the white hand man. Oh my God, kick to the midsection to Strowman. Smart strategy. Take the bit man down early, but I think that might have just pissed off Wade Barrett. No went for a shot, but nope. Barrett shot and took him down with a shoulder tackle. As I said, many people might consider Barrett the right hand man to Daniel Bryan in the rebellion as he has done the bidding for Bryan. When it comes to the, his ultimatums, Aiden Zack Ryder in defeating Brian Cage to win the TV championship last month. And, oh my God. I'm saying all these accomplishments like Braun Strowman isn't trying to destroy the Englishman. We heard from Zelina Vega earlier proclaiming that Aleister Black will be in the Royal Rumble match. And I can now confirm that is the case as management will not oppose that proclamation. Much to the dismay of pretty much everyone because he just got a bye without doing anything. And we might see Strowman do a lot to Wade Barrett and send him crashing. Oh my God, yes he does with a shot to the midsection. It seems like Strowman could put this one away anytime he wants to, but he is taking his precious time. Wade Barrett has, is, has used, used his bare knuckles before, but he might have to find a way to stop Strowman's momentum as he sent him crashing halfway across the ring. And now he ain't done. Suplex, and he just plants him. Strowman is just tossing Wade Barrett around like a toy. Two, put this one away early. No, only a two. Barrett somehow staying in this fight. What a night it has been. It will now be a triple threat match for the IC title as Cesaro defends against Keith Lee and Jeff Hardy. Big E Langston and Baron Corbin have qualified for the Rumble. Rusev wants Daniel Bryan and The Rock at some point in time, which I can't wait to see because that brute is one to be reckoned with as Strowman is brushing off these shots and laughing at Wade Perry. Oh, and the back elbow, he has the, the monster rock. The king of the jungle is rock. He missed with that shot, but he connected with this one, and he connected with another one. Oh, wait, but, oh, my God. It's like every time Strowman, excuse me, Barrett has some form of offense, Strowman finds a way to just knock him down. Uh-oh. Backbreaker. Knee to the spine. Smart from Wade Barrett to roll out. We haven't seen Strowman since ground zero. And now, Black's in the hard way. And now Strowman is looking to qualify for the Royal Rumble match. 
Oh, he, what is he going for? Oh, what a Samoan drop. Shades of his feud with Roman Reigns, whom we haven't seen since after Survivor Series. And Braun Strowman once again plants him. And now he's looking to put him to sleep. A very rare move that we see. Oh, Barrett just went limp. And now will that be enough to put the limp body of Baron Corbin away and Strowman to qualify for the Rumble? That would be a no. We heard from Finn Balor. He is focused on becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Uh oh, uh oh. Strowman plants Barrett. The monster is on a roll and we all know what is coming next. He has that look in his eyes. We all know what's next and that is the running power slam. Oh, wait a minute. Alistair Black making his way out here right now and what is he doing? Oh, there she is, the Duchess of Fury, Zelina Vega. The woman who reveals she's been secretly involved with the rebellion all along. Mike Kyoto and Strowman are distracted. Strowman just brushing her off. But she has the official right where she wants him. Oh! Bear with a low blow to Strowman. Shays and when Barrett helped Zack Ryder win the TV championship. And that was the plan. This was a setup. Oh, come on. Not this way. Not the ball hammer. Strowman is out. With the help of Black and Vega, Wade Barrett is going to the Royal Rumble. I'm sure Daniel Bryan is pleased wherever he is because now the representation of the rebellion in the Royal Rumble has grown immensely. And despite a dominant showing, all it took was a low blow and a bull hammer to put the monster away long enough to score the win. The Harbinger and Duchess of Fury have gotten the job done and they will probably take their leave as they are witnessing their carnage. And yes, that is but that appears to be true. They will take their lead, but leave it to Wade Barrett to soak it in in the middle of the ring. He's going to the Royal Rumble. The field is getting more stars. Star oh, oh, no. Wade, you might not want to turn around. There's a rapid monster lurking behind you. Running power slam. Stroma just laid out Barrett. Oh, what the? Black is back. What did he even... I thought he left. That appears to not be the case. We all know what's next. Shot to the back. Black Max. With Alistair Black by their side and the loss of Rusev, the rebellion further proving the point that they are still a force to be reckoned with and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Smackdown after being slammed through the cage wall. Edge is ready. Anderson better be ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Senior referee Mike Yoda will be standing on the outside to keep himself away from the mayhem of this match. And he will shout the pinfall count as it comes to that. Both men. Oh, and Anderson was not expecting Edge to come out of the block with that leaping lariat. Like I said, Edge for his first match back since 2011 in this universe. He's been retired with serious neck injuries. He is a former WWE World Champion in this series. And he is pop and he's not worried about titles or nothing. He's all about revenge as he plants Anderson. No, and he sends him the first contact, the first kiss of the steel by Anderson. And again. I said Edge is all hell bent on getting revenge for the man who tried to cripple him indefinitely. He tried to keep him from being a father to his kids but by being able to walk. There's nothing wrong with not being able to walk, but Edge, he felt like the man, he didn't have an option. And when it comes to not having options, he will take you apart. Edge is flowing nicely. Tilt-a-whirl DDT. 
from the second rope. Edge is flowing nicely here, ladies and gentlemen, as this is a, your main event of the, of the broadcast. Steel cage match. Oh, Edge went for a, a big boot. And Anderson connect with a neck breaker. Anderson has betrayed everyone he has held dear at one point. He just came fresh off of a war with Finn Balor after he cost Finn Balor the World Heavyweight Championship last June at King of the Ring. And now, after that loss, which ironically he was screwed out of once again, in his words, by Edge, when Edge got revenge and cost him the number one contendership at the Royal Rumble. Edge looks great. But he might not look great with that European uppercut because Carl Anderson is all about torturing the man he believes screwed him out of countless opportunities to become world champion. Oh, Edge look, is in trouble right here. Only a one. Like I said, there's no official in the ring because of the, the type of match this is. Mike Kyoto will shout the count on the outside. But he's also out there to make sure that no one gets in the cage because this has to end between these two. And a pump kick to the side of the skull. And now, Edge is rock. Oh, what a German suplex by the machine gun. You can't take anything away from the former club member, former tag team champion all over the world, including the IWGP Tag Team Championships. And now, oh, Edge is hung up face first off the top rope. He was, he was hung up off that shotgun, and now he is into the Boston Crab. Center in the ring. He cannot drag anywhere because there's no rope break in a steel cage match. Oh, and now he found a way to get out of it. I thought he was, he was going to be a little weak because of the, the bad spine, but Edge proved me wrong. And a belly-to-back suplex. Edge making sure. Scoop slam. What a scoop slam by Edge. Oh, now he's looking to systematically take Carl Anderson apart. Uh oh, snapping him down with the snapmare into the oh, an elbow to the to the temple of the head. Carl Anderson, fresh off of a loss to Finn Balor two months ago at Survivor Series. He has been focused on getting revenge on the man who many believe cost him that, that tight opportunity when Edge shockingly returned in London. Oh, going for a big boop, but no. Anderson took out that, and now he's kicked to the midsection. Now he's off the ropes into a rocket kick. That rocket kick might have rocked Edge's chances of victory right here. Two and three. No, only a two. Anderson can't believe that Edge kicked out of that rocket kick due to his previous neck injuries and head injuries, but Edge has been resilient ever since that bell rung. And now Anderson, he's going to have to make sure that he's going to do everything within his power to hurt Edge if he wants to make sure that he wins tonight's main event. No, what a European uppercut. Anderson just toying with the crowd. Oh, and an elbow to the side of the face. As I mentioned the last time Carl Anderson was inside of a steel cage, he was destroyed by Braun Strowman, a match that was actually made by Edge. Another, another plot that Carl Anderson think Edge had against him when he was general manager as he connects with the neck breaker. And a knee to the side of the face. This isn't about winning for... Oh, Anderson as he connects with that senton. As I said, this isn't about winning. This is all about torturing the man who has been a thorn in his side ever since he was general manager. Oh, Anderson. Anderson, double A spine, buster the spine on the pine. And will that pine be enough to put Edge away here? No, only A2, he barely got the shoulder up. He didn't kick out, but instincts alone had him get the shoulder up. And a gun stun. Just like that, this is all over. That gun stun was enough 
Oh, Anderson not even going for the pin. He wants to make sure Edge suffers as he connects with a second emphatic gun stun. Will this be enough? Will this be enough? Two and three. What? No! Edge kicked out of two gun stuns. Anderson, he was pissed off. He looks furiated. And now, third gun stun. This time, Anderson not going for the cover. He feels Edge has screwed him over time and time again as general manager. As I mentioned, he feels he needs to send a message to the new management, the cabinet, Paul Heyman, William Regal, and Lacey Evans not screwing him over as well as he's torturing and twisting at the neck, the surgically repaired neck where he had triple fusion neck surgery. Oh, and a knee to the side of the face. This crowd here in D.C. is showering Anderson with booze as, they, as he's doing more did enough but this is a match that Edge asked for this isn't a match that he demanded and now we're seeing blood we're seeing red Anderson is tasting and smelling the blood as a shark in the pool as he's talk he has opened a wound and he is targeted non-stop Anderson just toying with this crowd here in DC. This is our final stop before we head overseas to Tokyo, Japan. The final episode of Monday Night Carnage will take place in Tokyo, Japan before we hit the Do Tokyo Dome at the Royal Rumble. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, Edge fought back. Edge fought back, with, he took out the knee and now Edge, Edge, execution. Edge with the execution. The Imperial DDT creates some space. And oh, wait, Luke Gallows is out here. He said he will have Carl Anderson's back tonight. And I'm sure. What? Well, RKO! Randy Orton out of nowhere just took out the big LG with the RKO. Orton looking to lend Edge a hand in this case. There was no some nonsense going on unfolding with Gallows. And Orton hit a cut it over his own with an RKO. And now Edge taking full. Advantage giving a nod to Randy Orton for having his back and making sure he finishes this match once and for all. Finish this, finish this with a blood dripping spear. Edge normally goes for the pin here, but look at his eyes, look at the rage while the blood flows. Oh no! Oh, point sweet, sweet revenge on Carl Anderson. As on this day, he picks up the win in brutal fashion. There were countless times Carl Anderson could have put this one away, but after three gun stuns, Edge proved his resiliency. He proved his heart and determination with that execution DDT, and that led to Luke Gallows coming out down the ringside, but Randy Orton was having any of it as he came out of nowhere literally and laid out Gallows with the RKO on the grill of the ramp and Edge nodded his thanks before connecting with this spear. A move that brought him countless championship but he wanted revenge four months in the making as he connected with a brutal punt to the skull and with that move Edge picks up the win inside of the steel cage. Randy has been on the shelf rehabbing a knee injury, but has a, as a favor to his longtime friend, he made sure no shenanigans took place. And now, Edge can celebrate his successful return to the ring, and now quite possibly, he can look forward towards the Royal Rumble match. What a night, what a show. Welcome back to the Rated R Superstar. Welcome back to Edge. The Breeze who was taken out at the start of tonight's broadcast by Chad Gable, which might come back to haunt Chad Gable because Seth Rollins has a, he has quite the run when it comes to big fight matches and this last chance battle royal is as big as it gets. Many can view this as a preview to the Royal Rumble match. The only way to eliminate your opponent is to throw them over the top rope with both feet hitting the floor with the winner receiving a first class ticket to the main event of the biggest show in history, WrestleMania. Use the hashtag last chance to discuss this match if you're watching on the man in the comment section. And here we go. I will try my best to keep up 
as all the chaos is un underway as this crowd tells Seamus he looks stupid. He don't have that haircut anymore, but they don't change their mind easily. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The Shad game about to be out first by, by Chris Jericho. No, and Seamus easily fought out of, out of the big strong boys clutches, that being Tyler Bate. Uh-oh, Cash is Ono in trouble. Cash is Ono has met the monster. Oh, and the third time he tried to hang on, but Cash is Ono has been the first to be eliminated in the Battle Royal. His chances of entering the Royal Rumble is gone. Now we are down to seven. The winner in this match will enter officially the Royal Rumble match. Uh-oh. Sheamus. Sheamus is about to be eliminated by Strowman. No, that would be a no. And Sheamus is trying his best to hang on. Is he going to be eliminated? Oh, wait. Chris Jericho about to be eliminated as well. No. He found a way to get in. And Sheamus is still in this one as well. Johnny Gargano is, is on the apron. He's trying to stay in this fight. Oh. Roundhouse kick, but no, Seth Rollins was caught by Tyler Breeze. Tyler Bate, excuse me. Tyler Breeze is going in this match as a drop kick connects by Tyler Bate to Sheamus. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Stroman just eliminated Chris Jericho. And he just eliminated Chad Gable. Chad G I would hate to be Chad Gable going to the back, dealing with Daniel Bryan because he is not in the Royal Rumble match as Seth Rollins connect with that tornado DDT. Gable had the orders. And now will Johnny Gargano join? No. I thought he was about to be eliminated as well. Tyler Bate was about to be eliminated as well as he clutches the back of his head. Okay, you see Chris Jericho and Chad Gable have been eliminated both by Braun Strowman. And now Johnny Gargano just flattened the monster. He just flattened the monster. And now, uh oh. Oh, went for a super kick. Does Gargano to Seth Rollins and Seth Rollins connects with one to the side of the face. Oh, Sheamus is in trouble. Sheamus is in trouble with Strowman again. Now he's trying to hold on by the hand. He's trying to hold on, but he couldn't hold on long enough. And Sheamus has been eliminated. We are down to the final four. Rollins, Gargano, Bate, and Strowman. One of these men will be going to the Royal Rumble. Oh my God! He just took Strowman's head off with that meal kick. He just took Strowman's head off with that meal kick, and now Tyler Bate has Strowman rocked. He won't be able to do this. He can't do this. Oh my God! Tyler Bate just eliminated Strowman. Yo, guys, in production truck, we gotta run that back. Run that back. We got to see that one more time. Tyler Bate, the strength, just tossed him out of the ring. I'm at a loss for words. Strowman is at a loss for words. Tyler Bate just eliminated the big man. He is the big, strong boy for a reason. This crowd here in Tokyo could not believe it. Oh, Rollins. Rollins is about to be eliminated. Oh, wait. But he got an elbow, and he met that neck breaker by Gargano. We are down to the final three. Johnny Gargano, Seth Rollins, and Tyler Bate, one of these three men, are going to the Royal Rumble. They are going to the Tokyo Dome to, to compete for an opportunity at WrestleMania. Oh, wait, head scissors take down by Gargano. Head scissors take down by Gargano, and now Tyler Bate targeting the back of the right hand to the here and the now in Seth Rollins. Oh, Rollins kick to the midsection at Strowman is walking away and now bait in serious trouble in serious trouble oh and a super kick tyler bait has been eliminated by seth rollins we are down to the final two will it be johnny's rumble or will it be the order's prophecy oh gargano with the kip up he is not going to quit is a gear to the back of the head rollins knows he's in trouble right now Gargano knows what he needs to do. He needs to find a game plan. Oh, and a sit down by Rollins. A sit down by Rollins. And now it's targeting the knee. And now Rollins. Oh, no. Oh, no. Blackout. The blackout stunt. And now Seth Rollins knows. Oh, Gargano trying to hang on. Trying to hang on. Oh, he cannot. 
Johnny Gargano tried to hang on, but that wasn't enough to keep Johnny wrestling in this match. And now the final qualifying spot has been filled. Seth Rollins is in the Royal Rumble match. Right there was when it all went down. It went to the blackout. And Gargano tried his best to hang on, but it wasn't enough. And there it is. It is official. Seth Rollins is in the Royal Rumble. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the Tokyo Dome for the Royal Rumble. Good night. Rounds up the mystery of the six-man winner of the gauntlet will advance to Carnage Gold Rush to challenge Apollo Crews for the WWE World Championship. There's the bell. No one more distraction. Mike Kyoto is your official, and here we go. Finn sizing up his opponent. Gable is an Olympian as we get an elbow and call a tie up to start off this one. They have to go the distance to get that shot at Carnage Gold Rush, to get that shot at Apollo Crews as Gable takes full advantage. Oh, no, oh, Balor quickly slips out, locks him in between the legs, which is, which is smart because he got his legs wrapped around the vocal cords, which you can slowly cause him to pass out, but I'm pretty sure Gable would, has the will to not do that. But I'm pretty sure he was not expecting that sling blade. Oh, Balor, oh, possibly going for a German suplex, but the quickness of Gable to connect with a German suplex of his own. As I mentioned, he is a former Olympian. He knows how to go to distance. Oh, what a beautiful back. And now he's about to take him down. Oh, he targets the knee. Smart strategy. You take out the knee, you take out the coup de gras, among a lot of things. You take out his speed as well. You target a body part and quick, completely shift the momentum in your favor. Oh, as Gable those closed fists, but Balor was quickly on a beautiful kick to the side of the face. Balor dragging him from the ropes because he don't can't afford a rope break whatsoever. He wants to take him down as he took him, tried to take out the life from him with a double stomp. And now Balor snapping him up into the vertical suplex. What a night it has been, ladies and gentlemen. Kyrie Sane still has a problem with Io Shirai after being betrayed by her now former best friend. More on that situation, hopefully in the weeks to come as well as the winner of this gauntlet match in five weeks will face Apollo Crews for the oh, for the WWE World Championship as Balor sends Gable crashing to the outside. This is your main event for Monday Night Carnage. As Balor is begging Gable to get to his feet. Balor has him where he wants him and a double axe to the outside. We saw the formation of Camp Space, Shayna Baszler, Sonya Deville, Ronda Rousey, and Dakota Kai. Four of the most lethal strikers and grapplers and submission specialists, including Ronda Rousey, who is probably all of the above, joining forces to reshape the women's division and bring hell on earth, as they mentioned. As, and I'm, I'm, I'm stunned with that whole situation. Hopefully more on that as we come as well as Balor gets Gable to the inside and now we don't have to worry about a count out victory or a draw whatsoever from these two as the match is back in the center of the ring the winner of this match will advance in the gauntlet match Balor has quite the oh I'm pretty sure Balor was probably expecting to get that double axe but now Gable German suplex folding him in like an accordion he just folded him up with that German suplex I got so excited to call that one because it was beautifully executed as Gable Oh, Gable looking to slow the pace in his favor because Balor has the tendency of going full, full throttle and full speed ahead. But Balor, he has got to, keep, he has got to make sure that the favor slips on him. And oh, 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 going for it. Oh, and a belly to back suplex. Balor, former WWE World Heavyweight Champion, lost his title last June and lost. He lost his opportunity to get it back last night thanks to a low blow from Apollo Crews while all hell was breaking loose and a double, another double stump to Gable. The cabinet put him back in this match or put him in this match because he, they feel he, he deserves a, a, a fair shot at Apollo Crews but with none of the chaos to go and that and all he has to do to get to that opportunity is to make it through this gauntlet as Gable bounces back because I'm pretty sure he he tastes that blood that Balor just drew. I'm pretty sure it was from that elbow at some point. He tastes that blood and he is not in the best of moods as he sends Balor into the corner and oh what a forearm into the corner does Gable connect. 
No. Oh! Balor in serious trouble. And Gable taking pages out of the, the founder of the Rebellion's playbook, Shawn Michaels, who is backstage watching on. I'm pretty sure we still don't know what his status is. And now Gable stalking Balor. Moonsault! Beautiful moonsault connects. Hook of the leg. Looking to put this one away. Two and three. What? Was that three? Either Gable broke it up or Balor barely got the show up. Oh, what a beautiful leg drop. This match continues. Oh, and a kick to the back. Oh, we know what this is. Gable. Gable. He locked this in. In quite the few opponents. As Survivor says, he nearly made Triple H tap. Will he do the same thing to Finn Balor here? Will he force Balor to give up his opportunity at one more shot at Apollo Crews? No, Balor. Oh, elbow. Elbow to the bloody face to break free. Elbow to the bloody face to break free. And here comes a pun in regards to blood. Bloody Sunday by Balor. A bloody Sunday by Bla Balor. And just like that, Finn Balor advances to the gauntlet match. At the WWE World Championship, just like everyone else, Balor is ready. Kevin Owens is ready. Fight Owens fight. There's the bell, and here we go. Who will take that first strike? Balor is a little spent because he just went he went for a quite a while against Chad Gable. But Kevin Owens is gonna have to do is gonna have to take advantage possibly of those injured ribs and the arm as well. Because when he was locked in that in that camel clutch submission for a good minute, he was wrenching at the elbow. So Kevin Owens has quite a few pressure points that he can he can continue from Chad Gable as oh, oh what a wrist lock suplex. As I mentioned, Kevin Owens is, he was screwed out of the Royal Rumble last night by two henchmen, and now he will love nothing more than another shot at Daniel Bryan and, and the added leverage of being the, of a shot at Apollo Crews for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. He was going for something, but Balor got out of the way with a kick to the midsection and another kick. Kevin Owens has the size advantage of, of, over Finn, and Balor's going to have to use his quickness, to say the very least, to try to keep the big man down. Oh, what a knife edge. Snap Mare take down. And now Balor. Oh, and a beautiful drop kick to the side of the face. What did we see earlier tonight as we saw Adam Cole take out the Undisputed Era? Members of that faction have quite the history with both of these men, Kevin Owens and Finn Balor, over, over on the independent scene. And that super kick, will that be enough to put Balor away? No, Kevin Owens kicked out. I brought that up because, wow, that, that was shocking to say the very least. Adam Cole possibly just self-imploded the Undisputed Era just like that as Kevin Owens plants looking to explode the elbow of Finn Balor with that rushing last week with the arm trapped on the back. Not only does that do damage to the elbow, it does damage to his back. And I'm pretty sure Kevin would love nothing more than damage to the back because he can set up the pop-up power bomb, a move that he has won multiple championships with in the past. If you're just now tuning in, Finn Balor eliminated Chad Gable to advance in this gauntlet match with the winner advancing to the Carnage Gold Rush. And now Kevin Owens looking to advance in this gauntlet match with that pop-up power bomb. Mike Kyoto in perfect position to count this one out. Oh, Kevin Owens. Can't believe that Finn Balor just kicked out at two. Oh, Kevin possibly setting up for that stunner. Looking for that stunner right there. Oh, like I said, he's going for the stunner, but Kevin Owens. Oh, Kevin Owens did not anticipate Finn Balor having that well scanner with that Will bear kick to the face. And now Balor, he's in prime position. Air cool there. No, no, nobody home. Kevin Owens got away in a beautiful super kick, a second super kick. And now, Balor in prime position. Oh, Kevin Owens is taking him to the apron, taking him towards the apron. We know what he does when he, when he set this one up. Oh, wait, Kevin Owens sent crashing to the outside. Kevin Owens sent crashing to the outside. Mike Kyoto trying to keep him from there. And Kevin Owens, oh my God, what? Oh, come on, what the heck? Wait, Barrett attacking Kevin Owens while the official is holding Balor back. For the second night in a row, Kevin Owens has been screwed over by the Rebellion. Oh, and a boot to the temple. Come on. It, is Shawn Michaels in on this? We saw him in the back. 
We saw him in the back, and now Balor taking advantage. Oh, come on, not this way. Come on. Bloody Sunday to Kevin Owens. A bloody Sunday to Kevin Owens, and Balor has advanced in this gauntlet match with a controversial victory over the prize fighter. What is going on with that? But he can't focus on, on that right now because we got this right here. Balor, Biggie Lance, and King of the Ring rematch. There's the bell in this gauntlet match. This is Balor's third match. Biggie is kind of fresh. Oh, Balor going for a, a forearm, but, but Biggie was not about to have any of that because he is quick on his feet for a big man. Found the bounce off the road and a shoulder tackle. Like I said, Balor, he, he has got to want that win back. He lost the world championship, obviously thanks to Carl Anderson, but nevertheless, he lost the world championship to this man, Big E, Big e Langston, as he lo is looking to continue the wave that he oh, what a what a what a chop to the face. And now has him rocked in the corner. Repeated shots taking him down. Big E, full advantage to the self-proclaimed Mr. Career Killer. Balor bounces off the ropes, ducks out of the way. The quickness of Big E is on full display. They was button chest, and now a knee to the side of the face. Balor overcame Gable and Kevin Owens, obviously in controversial fashion, but I'm pretty sure he was not expecting to run into this big truck that is Big E Langston. Oh, what a backstabber. He finally got the big man down. You can't really discredit Finn Balor. He, had, he held his own in that last man standing match last June, and he's going to do that and more to take down this big man, and he's doing a brilliant job right now. Balor to the second rope. Double axe to the face. Double elbows to the face, and that's smart right to hook of the leg. Looking to put this one away right here. One, only a one. That's all he's going to get. You got to do a lot more to put the former world champion down and get that one step closer to Apollo Crews in five weeks. Balor sending Big E off the rope. Going for, oh, what a beautiful drop kick to the chest and the face. Balor sends Big E into the corner. Balor, oh, what a beautiful knife edge chop again. Snapmare takedown. And a drop kick to the side of the face. Like I said, this is Balor's third match of the night. Big E is a little fresh, having time to rest up. Like I said, Balor wants to get that win back from last night. He has to go the distance and get his win back from Big E Langston. But that's going to be easier said than done. Oh, what a, what a beautiful suplex. Had his arms trapped in everything. Big E is going to pull everything he can out of the bag to get that one more shot at Apollo Crews. Because if you don't know, or if you're just new to the series, Apollo Crews defeated Big E Langston to win the World Championship at Survivor Series to merge it with the WWE Championship to compete, complete the trifecta of becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. So Big E wants that, that, wants that opportunity to get it back. Oh, what has he got going on right here? Oh, what a, what a fall away slam from the second rope. And Big E is feeling it. He is on fire. What a night it has been. And now a second fall away slam, and we are wrapping it up with this gauntlet match that has been a, that has been flamed so far as Biggie looking to take Balor's head off with that knee to the side of the face. Oh, going for the kick to the midsection, but Balor, oh, what target the knee? You target that is smart. You chop the big man down, you keep him down. You target the, the his strong suit, which is in my opinion his knees as well as his upper body. Oh, a kick to the spine. Like I said, the winner of this match will advance because they have two more opponents, including Bobby Lashley and Daniel Bryan. Okay, snap me a takedown. And another drop kick. Oh, look like he scraped the back of his head. Balor is in, fair, in rare form because he wants to go the distance to get one more shot at Apollo Crews and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship right here in his, in his home field advantage because even though he's not from Tokyo, Japan, he has qu had quite the career here in Tokyo, Japan. Former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion and Tag Team Champion, he wants to make sure that he does not di disappoint his fans here in Tokyo as he rolls to the outside. They have a, a count of 10 to get out. Oh, Big E like a truck. 
coming full speed ahead. And he takes him down on the shoulder tackle. Two. Referee at the count of Oh, bouncing him off the LED post. The referee has until the count of 10. Oh, this match will end in a draw. Both men are out. Oh, what a spear! What a spear! Balor in serious trouble right here. All Biggie got to do is possibly set up for that big inning, and it is up. Oh, bouncing off the ropes, leaping over him. Big splash! Finn Balor is in serious trouble. Balor, he's going to do a lot more than to. Oh, come on. Come on. Daniel Bryan's not even dressed to compete, but why is he out here now? Is there something going on with Finn Balor? Oh, what the? Oh, man! <laughs> Rusev, the man who caused Bryan the Royal Rumble match last night, is back again. And Bryan, now with his head between his legs, getting the hell out of here because Rusev is on, on the chase to get continue his revenge path against Daniel Bryan. He is out of here. Big E setting up for the big ending. Sending to put this away. No. Open your mind with the Brody clothesline. Big E with the tribute to Big Rig. Rest in peace, Big Homie, as Big E Langston has advanced in the gauntlet match. But I have to ask, what if Bobby wins the gauntlet? How will the BDC handle having two members in the world title main event? We'll get to that as the bell is about to ring, and here we go. Oh, Bobby. Bobby! Bobby in serious trouble already out the gate because Big E is not about to let what happened. I told you. Once he once he let he let Bobby have his moment in the sun, but he's about oh no 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 no. We saw this. We saw this last night. Oh my god. That's how he lost the world title last November at Survivor Series. Apollo got out of the way and took advantage of him, landed on his neck. And Bobby is about to do the exact same thing. Big E, he, he's gonna have to chill on these spears from the apron to the outside because it's getting hard easier to scout it. And now Bobby taking advantage and Big E is going to have to do a lot to try to bounce back out of this one. What a night it has been, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we are wrapping it up. The gauntlet match. Hopefully this match doesn't end on a draw. Oh, take some head off with that Larry. Big E is in some trouble because he landed on the back of his head once again after missing that suicide spear. Bobby getting in to break the, the official's count. They have until the count of 10 to get this one back in the ring. No, oh, bouncing the face first off of the LED post. Referee at the count of, of four. He's got to get back in here if he wants to advance. But, it, but you guys understand my question. What if Bobby wins the gauntlet match? Oh, what a kick to the midsection. What if he wins the gauntlet match? How will the BDC handle having two members in a world title main event? We'll get there, I guess, if, this, if that even happens. But you can see Bobby is banished up from taking not only that suicide spear in the men's rumble match, but Big E powerbomb Bobby on this concrete in the Tokyo Dome. So you already know Big E is, has a target, and that is those ribs, as he, as you just saw right there. Oh, he takes his head off with that Larry. As I mentioned, the hatred for these men started when Bobby Lashley took out Xavier Woods in the parking lot during the WWE Jokers Wild event last December. And ever since, oh, shot to the ribs. And ever since, Big E has been on a tear to get revenge for his fallen brother, even though they, the New Day is history. Biggie has a, 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 a respect for his once brothers in that faction. And now his rage continues to grow as he, oh, as he continues to just, I'm, as, as he continues to fight Bobby Lashley. I'm just so excited. That's why my, my tongue tied a little bit. On the kick to the ribs. I'm pretty sure it's hard to breathe from Bobby because those ribs, those, if you have broken ribs as Bobby Fish is, is currently on the, on the injury reserve because of that, it is hard to breathe. Imagine having bruised ribs after, oh, taking a power bomb to the, to the concrete as well as a spear. So you already know Bobby is looking for revenge on, on Big E because you notice not once have they gone for a pin. Oh, and a, what, a, what a clothesline sends him flat. Oh, Bobby. 
Pegging him to get to his feet. What a war so far. And we're not even done. What a spine buster. Because Dan Bryan has yet. What is, what is the status of Dan Bryan? Is he even going to make it back to this match? Because Rusev has been. He's chased, he chased him off during the last match. And now Bobby looking at. Oh, I thought he was about to take the breath out of Big E with that spear. But Big E got out of the way. And a shoulder tackle. Biggie got out of the way. He is, he is trying to mount some type of offense after being, landing on the back of his head, but he is in this match. As Bobby looking to, looking to catch a breather, he's going to need all the time he get, but Biggie is stalking him. Biggie, oh, what a spear! What a spear to the outside! If those ribs ain't broken by now, I'm pretty sure they are. The Biggie just speared him and now send him crashing into the barricade. Oh, Biggie, what is he going for? What is he going for? Oh, his back gave out a little bit. They have been in a war. Oh, oh my God! His his back bounced off that 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 barricade or, or the LED post, and now referee at the count of seven. They're gonna have to get back in, but I don't think they even care at this point. Oh, kick to the mix session by Bobby. What is he going for? Oh, the strength. Oh, the dominator on the floor. One of these men needs to get back in to break the count. Come on. Oh, the referee calls for the bell. This one has been thrown out as a draw. This crowd can't believe. What? Wait a minute. Piggy's back up. How the hell is, how the hell is he back up? And the brawl between these two continues. We're gonna need more officials out here to break this one up. We're gonna need that National Guard call last. And as I say, we're gonna need we're gonna need everybody out here to break these up. Because these, these two, they are hell bent on breaking each other in half. What does that mean for Daniel Bryan? Does he win? Does he advance? But ne that is not the story at the moment because Mike Kyoto motioning for Bobby to leave as Jessica Carr is out here trying to calm down Big E Langston. Oh, wait, Bobby's back out here. He, Bobby, we're going to need some help out here because Biggie is pissed. Both men are pissed that this ended in a draw, but they are more pissed that both men are standing. I'm guessing, what the hell are they going to do to keep each other down? Spears aren't working. Dominators aren't working. What are these two men are going to have to do? Jessica Carr trying to keep Biggie back. Bobby is, is goading. Langston to, to, to get on it. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Biggie got out of the way of Jessica Carr. And now we got a brawl. We're going to need some more help out here. Oh, we got more officials and security and referees. Oh, oh, wait. Now we got shots. We, we're going to need a lot more to break this one down. This is indeed awesome. Will Rusev exact revenge on The Rock for costing him the title, but that has not been the case. He has been at the throat of his former stable for the past couple of weeks which came to a head last week when Brian lured Rusev into a neutral location and I use that term loosely and left him badly wounded and what Brian claiming there is no one left and that he might as well take the gauntlet by default but he might be right and we might have to what no there's no way he's back he is Kofi Kingston is back and he's in the gauntlet match. Boom! Daniel Bryan can't believe it. And I'm sure wherever he is, Apollo Crews is blowing a gasket because the man he tried to cripple two months ago is back and could possibly see him at Carnage Gold Rush. Daniel Bryan played every trick in the book. He tried to get Chad Gable to soften up Balor and even made, had Wade Barrett attack Kevin Owens with a bat. And he even took advantage of the ongoing hatred between Bobby Lashley and Big E Langston, thinking he would uh, advance to Carnage Gold Rush with ease, not on Kofi's watch. He is back and will possibly want nothing more than to get his hands on Apollo Crews and completely alter the main event of WrestleMania. Daniel Bryan, you have one more match, and that is against Kofi Kingston. Ring that bell, referee, and here we go. This is your final match of the gauntlet. Kofi Kingston is back. Daniel Bryan cannot believe it. He is begging Kofi to, to bring his best, and he does. With, oh, what a beautiful night vest chop. I thought he was going for an elbow collar tie up, but Kofi, he is not in the technical wrestling type of mood. He is in a fighting mood because this is his first match back in over two months. Kofi sends Daniel Bryan into the corner. Oh, what, what repeated shots 
Vintage Kofi. Oh, what a European uppercut or a straight up uppercut. Because he is he is taking the fight to Daniel Bryan. His first match back since last November. After he was dropped on his head by a suplex driver by Apollo Cruz. He shouldn't even be walking, but he is always going for the double stomp. But Bryan responds with a beautiful drop kick. Daniel Bryan is no slouch whatsoever. As I mentioned, Bryan wants to make sure that he gets a shot at the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. His group had quite the disappointing night last night. He was the runner-up in the men's Royal Rumble match before being screwed out of it by Rusev, which I still don't understand how Daniel Bryan got out of the reins of Rusev. But nevertheless, Bryan is in this gauntlet match. This is our last match of the gauntlet match. The winner of this match will advance to Carnage Gold Rush in five weeks to face Paul Cruz for the WWE World Championship. But Daniel Bryan's got to do a lot more than that to keep Kofi down. Brian sending Kofi into the corner. Kick to the midsection. Now Brian. Uh oh. Beautiful sunset flip power bomb right there. Usually go for the cover, but Brian is has been all about the torture. Because you saw, did you see how he was acting towards Pete Dunn at the last at the last moment? He is calculating. He is he is he is he'll target a body part and, and literally make you wish to give up. So hopefully Kofi can keep the pace at his pace and not slow it down for Daniel Bryan. Oh, what a drop kick in the corner. Now Bryan full speed ahead and another drop kick to the face. Like I said, Bryan, oh, Bryan. Kick to, kick to the chest, looking to kick the chest in. Oh, Bryan in a, oh, what a kick to the face from, to Kofi. The last time Daniel Bryan was WWE Champion, it was in year three when he defeated John Cena, as I mentioned. So he would like nothing more than another shot at the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which will more than likely start a faction warfare between the Rebellion and the BDC. But he has to get past a vengeful Kofi Kingston who had his career nearly snatched from him at the hands of Apollo Crews. Oh, Kofi possibly going for the kicks again in the corner, but Kofi had that very well scouted. Now Kofi looking to let Daniel Bryan that he is back. Repeated shots to the face. As the crowd counted with him, but no, Bryan blocked that last one and got out of the way. And now Bryan, no, oh, he takes him down to one knee. And now Bryan, and again targeting that knee. Smart stretch. Oh, jeez. Looking to rip it, rip the knee from its socket. Smart strategy from Daniel Bryan because he he targets a body part. He can do a lot more to keep it down. Oh, no, no, no. Speaking of body parts, he's looking to take that arm out. The LaBelle lock. The LaBelle lock is locked in. It is deep. That Kofi has nowhere to go. He has to find a way to get out if he wants to make sure that he gets Apollo Crews. Gets that one more shot at Apollo Crews two months in the making. Is he going to tap? Nowhere to go. Kofi. Oh, the, the heart of Kofi as he fights out. And a shot to the face. He's going to hide the pain in that arm. Uppercut connects. He's got the, like I said, he's going to hide that pain in that arm from suffering that LaBelle lock because Daniel Bryan will prob probably lock it in once more or go for the counter mutilation as Kofi connects with that body splash from the second rope. Looking to put this one away and advance to Gold Rush Carnage. And a kick out. Daniel Bryan is holding his own against a man he didn't even expect to see here tonight. But this was a surprise the cabinet had in the bag. And what a fitting end it would be to a comeback to get a shot at Apollo Crews with that boom drop. And the boom drop to Kofi. Oh, excuse me, to Daniel Bryan as Kofi sets up what we know what is about to happen. Trouble in paradise. No, no, no. Bryan got out of the way. Oh, what a roundhouse kick to the back of the head. We saw this last night. He was toying with the crowd. The yes chant. Going for the knee. Plus, no, no. Got out of the way, does Kofi. Kofi got out of the way. Oh, what a beautiful knife that's chopped right there. Now, Kofi. Kofi. Going for it. Tribute to New Day. Boom drop once more. Boom drop once more. And oh, come on. Chad Gable and Wade Barrett once again coming to the aid of Daniel Bryan. And what? 
Kevin Owens is back with the super kick. Wade Barrett. His life flashed before his eyes, and now Owens is chasing Barrett away. He has no ties to Kofi Kingston, but he is getting revenge on the Rebellion for screwing him out of his gauntlet match in the super kick to Wade Barrett. And now Kofi. I hope Apollo is watching because this could be in your future. Trouble in paradise. Trouble in paradise. Kofi is back. Kofi appears to be better, and Kofi is going to Carnage Gold Rush to challenge for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. MVP is furious. He thought he had the Big E situation handled, but no one expected to see Kofi Kingston back. And now, without a doubt, Kingston will challenge Apollo Crews for the WWE World Championship. MVP is pissed. But that is how we ended. Oh, I thought the Rebellion was going to come out and aid Daniel Bryan. But Kevin Owens, a vengeful Kevin Owens, wanted to get back for them screwing out of his, his gauntlet match. And that right there, the trouble in paradise was enough to put Daniel Bryan away. Kofi overcame a head injury over two months ago and is back in the middle of that ring celebrating a victory over Daniel Bryan. Looking at another missed opportunity as that is what is all about right there. The World Television Championship defended under golden rules. The challenger Champa, the champion Atami. 30 minute time limit on the clock for the world television title. Here we go as the bell ring and we are at a stalemate. Who will strike first? Big fight feel to close out tonight's broadcast. Under golden rules, Evelyn Carla tie up. Who will get the advantage right here? And that be a Hideo Atami with the headlock takeover. Will Champa find a way to get out of that? Nope. Atami switches and targets that surgically repelled tricep and bicep of, Ch of Champa. He has quite the few injuries. Both of these men ha has had so shoulder injuries, elbow injuries, to say the very least. And it would be smart to target that as Atami breaks free of the headlock. And over the knee to the midsection. Looking to suck the air from the abdomen of Champa. Oh, what a slap. Oh, repeated slaps. Bouncing on the rope. Oh, Mike Kyoto got in the wrong place at the wrong time, but now we're about to be another wrong place at the wrong time. What a power bomb from Champa. One minute in, and we are already in for a big fight. Oh, like I said, targeting that the surgery repelled collarbone of a Tommy. That's the reason why he, he wears that elbow pad because he knows that that'll be a bullseye to say the very least. And now, Champa. Looking to make sure that he regret ever signing on a dotted line to make this match official. Get to the mid session. And a Brody line. What a discus clothesline. Looking to take his head clean off. Here's the cover. Only a one. Hideo said, You got to do a lot more to keep me down, which is smart. Champa sent him in the corner. Oh, what a knife fest chop. Flesh on flesh is not fun. Today will go through the pain to make sure that he remains the world television champion. And now he slipped out of that control right there. Now he's going for but Oh, beautiful counter from, from Champa. Beautiful counter from Champa. And now, once again, targeting that surgical repair. Try something there. You see the mark. Over his over his chest because that's how how big the, the scar is. And Champa wants to make sure that he takes out the arm as well to make sure that he leaves Union Dale as the world TV champ. Get to the mid session, has the champion rock in the corner. Hopefully Mike Kyoto stays out of the way of the action. This go round. What a night it has been, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're, we're capping it off with this beautiful main event between Champa and Atami for the World TV title. Oh, he was going for a suplex, but Atami first it with a wrist lock suplex. Oh, Atami, the arrogance oozing. Oh, what a kick to the face. The arrogance oozing from the, from the pores of the reigning champ. 
that either might be smart or it may come back to bite him. But this might come back to bite Champa because he slipped up and now he's locked in the guillotine choke. The guillotine is locked in. Looking, look at, look at the torque. Look at how his his he's targeting that breath with the champ. The challenger found a way to get out of that. And now, oh, what a knee to the face! A knee to the face by Champa. Has him right where he wants him now. Shoulder tackle, repeated shoulder tackle, looking to suck the air from the champion. And repeated kick, scrubbing the boot to the chest. We are reaching that 25 minute mark. Oh, what a, you look like we see some, see a drop of blood from the, from the champ as he bleeding from the nose. That's how hard hand this match is already a win for a shoulder tackle, but nobody home as uh, Tommy had that scouted. Oh, what a beautiful head scissors takedown. And look, like he spiked the back of his head right there. Nevertheless, Tommy would do whatever it takes. And now, oh my God, what a, what a kick. And it's smart. The challenger rolling out of the way, but Tommy not about to let him breathe. Oh my God. Tommy will do whatever it takes to leave you and your dad. That's the TV champ. You don't have to worry about the 10 count because it's a 20 minute, it's a 20 second count. Oh, what a boot to the side of the face. So they have quite the leverage than your usual rules. Champion Atami trading blows, exchanging fists. Oh, what another knee to that open wound. And now Champa. Bouncing the Tommy off, and now another knee to the side of the face that has him, the champion, rocked. No oh, bouncing him off the steel steps right there. Smart strategy. You keep this man down. You keep you you, you pick a body part and you focus on it. And the Tommy is, excuse me, Champa is focusing on every body every body part that can easily bring him immense pain. Referee at the count of 14. He's gonna have to get in there before he gets counted out. Because there is no such thing as a sudden death if you get counted out only if you is a count out. I mean, excuse me, a draw with a time limit. Got him in the corner. Oh, oh my God. Stiff shoulder tackle in the corner. And now Champa has him right where he wants him as he plants him. He has the champion. He has the champion at a severe disadvantage right here. Now, look at the, look at the challenger stalking. Throwing another knee to the open wound and another lariat. Will this be enough to put him away right here? Are we looking at a new TV champion right here? And then it's three. No, only a two. Only a two from Tommaso Ciampa. Ciampa, look at the blood on his fist. That's how stiff and brutal this match is with another knee to the champion's open wound. And now Ciampa. Oh, look at the strength of the psycho killer with a sit out power bomb. Two and three, no. Champa can't believe that he kicked out of that power bomb, but that is just proof that you got to do a lot. And this might do it right here. Will the champion, oh, what a clover leaf. Will the champion tap? Will the champion nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, nowhere to reach from? He's far from the ropes. Mike Kyoto can see. That he has him right where he wants him. Oh, the champion found a way to break free, kicking him off. Atami struggling to get back to his feet. Oh, what a what a knee to the midsection right there. We are at that point that both men, the cardio is gonna come into play if they can go to Oh, what a knee plus! What a knee plus! That's it! Atami to retain the championship right here, no! Champa found a way to kick out of that knee plus. And Tommy digging his claws into that open wound of Champa. Both men have drawn blood, proving that they will do whatever it takes to leave here and remain the world television champion. Or at least crown a new champion here in Uniondale. What a night it has been, ladies and gentlemen. And we are capping it off.
with this brutal encounter for the world TV title under golden rules. If you're just out tuning in, oh, what a back body drop. Fan Balor revealed his motives for taking out John Moxley to kick off the broadcast. And now Tommy has other motives as he climbs, struggles to climb his way to the top. Going for the double stuff. No, nobody home. Roll through. And now Champa sends him crashing to the outside. This has been nearly 10 minutes of a brutal, stiff fight. Blood has been drawn, and now Champa, oh, scooping him up, looking to powerbomb him somewhere. Oh, is he going to powerbomb him on those steps? No, he's switching it up. And they're going to roll through. Oh, his back gave out. His back gave out a little bit, and Atom is going to have to, he's going to have to focus on it, and that is exactly what he's going to do, send him back inside the ring. As we are 40 seconds away from the 20 minute mark. Tommy and Champa. Stiff blows. Targeting the blood, targeting the body. Making sure that they leave Uniondale. Champa with the wild swings in the midst, but he connected that time. Oh, what an uppercut. The challenger. The challenger has made Tommy's chest red. That's how brutal this match has been. Oh, what another uppercut to that open wound. It looked like he got a busted nose. I can't really tell from this angle. Another knife has shot, but Tommy had that scouted. Oh, what a what a kick to the midsection. And now Tommy fighting back. The will of Kenta is fueling his passion to leave Union Dell as the world TV champ as he unleashes these kicks in the corner. And Champa knows he's been in a war as we have been at, at this for less, almost 11 minutes and oh what a beautiful baseball drop kick in the corner would that be enough for Tommy to retain the World TV Championship right here no only a two only a two what a war my blood is boiling sweat is dripping from my forehead because we have witnessed quite a fight for that TV title and now Tommy unleashing a fury of offense now, oh, what a kick. Tommy. Oh, Tommy looking, looking to suck the life over the beast bite. The brutalizer. The brutalizer in the center of the ring. He has the arms trapped, so Champa will have to motion if he wants to give it up. Will he give it up? No, he's fighting through the pain. He's fighting out. Oh. Elbows, exposed elbows to the open wound. Champa. Oh, Atami. Going for, oh, he went for the knee plus again, but oh, Champa had that scouted. He was playing possum. He was playing possum. He wants to make sure that Atami knows. He's begging Atami. Oh, what a knife fetch chop, both men. And it's like Atami is just brushing those chops off. We're at a stalemate. They're begging each other to give them their best shot. Oh, what another knife edge shot. And a forearm by, by the champion. Kick to the midsection by the challenger. He has a Tommy. Rock, but oh, what a forearm. They're begging. It's like they're begging each other. A wild swing in the midst by Tommy. Went for a, a kick. But champion had that scouted. Went for an open shot. But now he got it this time. Oh, what a knee. The challenger finally got the advantage of that exchange right there. Bouncing him off the ropes. Ducks out of the way. Going for another shoulder tackle, but Tommy said not again. Get to the midsection right there. What, is, what does the champion have? Oh, has a brain buster. What a brain buster by the champion to retain the World TV Championship right here in only a two. Champa wiping the blood on his face. He knows he's been in a fight. And we haven't even reached 20 minutes that they've been going at it. They've been going at it from bell to bell, and we are nowhere near done. Will they go the distance for the World Television Championship? And if, if I have to say so, so far, yes, they will, as another kick to the side of the face. The blood of Adeo is on the face, on the fist, excuse me, of Champa. And now, Atami. Wants to make sure that the blood of Champa is running down his face. Those 
Oh, shot to the kidney. Oh, what a slap to the face. You already know Hideo doesn't respect anyone. Now, what's he going for here? Oh, Champa. Champa fighting back. Oh, what a slap to the face. He gave him his receipts. Another slap, wild swings. This man, the rage of Champa. Is, he don't matter if, it, if he hit or miss. He wants to know that he is going down. If he's going down, he's going down swinging as he sends Hideo down to the outside. And now, oh, Champa, what a cross body. What a corkscrew splash from the, from the ring to the floor. And a beautiful drop kick. He barely got that court screws body splash, but no, what a knee to the side of the face. But he got the champion and another beautiful drop kick. This fight once again spilling to the outside. Now we're going to the stage. This is Champa's playground. This is Champa's wheelhouse because he knows what he got to, oh, he blocked that, and what a shot to the face, and now, oh my God! What a spinning back fist. Spinning back fist from, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, what a snap suplex, spine first. It looked like he just limped. Champa just went limp after landing on that concrete. The same spot where Finn Balor was planted face first with that Styles Clash. We have now reached the 15 minute mark. What a war it has been. These men have been going at it for 15 minutes and they don't plan on stopping. He's begging the Tommy to get to his feet. Big fight field. Beautiful drop kick from the top. This sold out crowd here in Union Dale is jacked because they, what a match they have been, they have been gifted. And now a Tommy, he's begging him to get to his feet. He is begging. What is he going for? He is stalking him. He's hyping it up. <laughs> Went for the knee plus, but nobody home. And now Champa. Oh, Champa. Wrestling him down. Going for the surgical repair. Collarbone. Go to Fujiwara on bar. Oh, he's reaching back. Is he going to break the arm? Is he going to break the shoulder of the champion to win the title? Knowing Champa, he will do just that. Will a day tap? Will Adeo tap? Oh no, he found a way to roll through. Went for the school board. Nope, nobody home. He, he kicked out of that real quick. And now, Hideo going for the... Oh my God. Mike Kyoto wrong place at the wrong time. When Champa went down, Mike Kyoto went down as well. All this for the World Television Championship. And now Adeo. What does he have? Man? What a war. All for the TV title. You would have thought this was the world title, but that's how important this TV championship is to both men. What is he going for? Super players? No, he switched it. Falcon's arrow from the top. A Falcon's arrow from the top. And now with Tommy. Oh, he's setting him up. Going for his patented. GTS. Go to sleep. He falls to the cover. This is it. Hideo with Tommy to retain the world of it. What? Somehow Champa kicked out of the GTS. This is indeed awesome. And that just pissed off the champion. What a kick to the face. What a war. Like I said, you would have thought this is for the TV, for the World Heavyweight Championship, but both men are proving that this title is just as prestigious as and important as the world title. Your main event. Oh, going for, oh, he, he was going for probably for the Huluva kick, but Tommy had that, excuse me, Champa had that very well scouted, but now he responded with that knee to the face, and now Champa stalking a bloody Champa. Oh, another knee to the face, and now another Larry. Oh, now Champa. Oh, he's losing it. He's trying to figure out what does he got to do to keep this man down. He's targeting that, that open wound. As the blood drips from his face, he wants to make sure that he'll be dripping in gold. By the time that bell rings, oh, he's probably going for Oh, he's going, setting it up. Project Champa. That's it. New champ. 
New champ right here, too. And count it. Three. No, only. What? Only a two. Tampa trying to figure out what does he got to do. He's begging. Going for an elbow drop. Oh, nobody home. He just ate that elbow to the canvas. Oh, a knee plus. Another knee plus by the champion. The Tommy has him up. GTS, the second go to sleep, and the Tommy, he collapses on top. The shoulders are down, and the Tommy retains the TV title. What a war. There you see it. Champa tried his best. He put up quite the fight. This fight, fight spilled all over the ring. And oh, that Project Champ, I thought that was it right there. But the Tommy found a way to fight back. And he connected with a second GTS. And both men collapsed and fell out. But nevertheless, taking nothing away from Champa, he brought his A game and then some. But that wasn't enough to wrestle the TV title away from a Tommy. Zack Ryder and Tommaso Ciampa, but that is what it's all about. The senior official, Mike Chioda, will officiate this, our main event of the broadcast for the TV title. Who do you have surviving Golden Rules this week? 30 minutes on the time. Bit of, there we go. There's the bell. Gable challenging the Tommy as a replacement for Wade Barrett being the team. Nevertheless, we are underway for the, our main event. Elbow and collar tie up. Gable and her Tommy. Gable takes full control right here. Targeted that arm, the surgical repel, tricep, and collarbone, but he's gonna quickly take full control and he is feeling himself already. Oh, but Adeo was about to not take that light. He went for the kick, but nope. Gable is no slouch, I, I have to tell you that. Even though you don't probably agree with who he associated himself with, he is no slouch. And he's smart to target that surgical repel, shoulder and elbow. Tommy, oh, Tommy was in trouble with that snap, that snap suplex, but uh, he found a way to slip out and a shot to the spine. And now, Hideo with a wrist lock suplex, wrist lock suplex, and now, oh, no respect. Because if you want a, a little more trip down memory lane, Hideo has a beef with the rebellion. Alistair Black took out Hideo. Oh, what, what, what a. What a beautiful Haluva kick in the corner. Alistair Black took out a day with Tommy last September at WWE Ground Zero. And he's faced every member of that group except for Black. And now Chad Gable looking to wrestle that title away from him right here. No, only a two. It was barely a two. Oh, what a form. This crowd here in Charlotte not pleased whatsoever. This is... A situation of a car subject to change. Wade Barrett has been detained by Charlotte PD. He was initially scheduled to be involved in this match. But as a replacement, Chad Gable of the Rebellion. No doubt a gift from Daniel Bryan for his loyalty, if you will. And I say that with air quotes in regards to the situation involving John Moxley and Shaman Man a number of weeks ago. And now, oh, double stomp to the midsection and now Tommy taking his time and making sure that Gable knows who he's in the ring with. Oh, double axe and on to the face. I still can't believe that that Wade Barrett, he was tipped off. We all saw what happened, but we don't know more than what we saw. What happened to Zack Ryder? Oh, and the, oh, I know what happened to Chad Gable right there. The, the knees to the midsection, the gut buster. And now Tommy looking to make sure that Gable suffers. Looking to put this one away quicker than, than he did last week. He went 20 minutes with Tommaso Ciampa. And now he had the, the, the brutalizer locked in, but Gable found a way to fight through the pain. He is not an Olympian for a reason. They have, a, they have a, a, a higher tolerance span, if you will, because they can go through a lot more than the average Joe. And now, shotgun! Hanging them off the top rope. Gable toying with this crowd here in Charlotte. Rubbing it in. Oh, what a rolling senton from the second rope. And now Gable 
Oh, Gabe found a way to get out of that brutalizer. Will Atomic be able to get out of this bow and arrow? This bow and arrow. As he's wrenching, targeting that lower back, which is smart. Oh, wait. Atomic found a way to get out of that. He went for the pin. Oh, what a kick to the face. It's smart for Gable to target that bat because even though he's not wearing bandages or anything, you can tell Hideo went through some pain because that Project Champa from last week is not one move you want to take. I don't care how tough you think you are. Hideo in full control right here. Oh, what a kick to the face as Gable found a way to get out of it. Now Gable, oh, smart targeting that knee. Targeting that knee. Because you take out that knee plus and that GTS. Elbow drops to the knees. That is smart. That will force anyone to cry out in pain. And now, uh oh. Gable. He did all that to set up for the ankle lock. The ankle lock is locked in. Clear as day. Will, it, will Hideo reach the rope? He is far away from the rope, the same move that he nearly forced Triple H to tap out in. The ankle lock. Oh, wait. He pushes him off. He found a way to get out of it. He's going to be brushing the, the leg. Oh, and he used the other knee for the knee plus. He used the other knee for the knee plus, but then he get all of it. Two and three. No, only a two. Gable just kicked out of the knee plus. I don't think he got all of, all of the run that he, he normally gets because that he had that bag leg, but I don't think Gable thought that he would do it. Oh, is he going for the GTS? Is, is he going for Is that knee going to buckle? Is, okay, he, keep, he kept his wheel about him, but Gable with those exposed elbows. And now Gable. Oh, my God. Rolling kick to the face. And now Gable in no man's land. Going for a top row sent up, but oh, he splatted. He splatted spine first to the mat. Rolling to the outside to try to catch a breather, but he is stealing no man's land. Oh, no, no, no. I spoke about his spine being injured. This might do it. Oh, my God. Spine first off the apron. That is beyond the hardest part of the ring because he connected on the apron as well as that LED post. And now... Atami, Atami looking to put this one away. Oh, no, 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 no. GTS! Shaking the cobwebs off that, off that leg that Gable was targeting. But he's not done. He had Gable in the bag, but he's sending a message. Obviously to the Rebellion. Most importantly, Alistair Black. And a second GTS! Two. And Hideo Itami survived Golden Rules to retain the title once again. 23 minutes and 12 seconds were left on the clock, and Hideo Itami survived. But you can't take anything away from Chad Gable. He tried his best, even, th even though it was an impromptu showing, because Wade Barrett has been detained by Ch Charlotte PD. And that knee plus, I thought that was it right there. But Gable found a way to get out of it, and he even fought back. But it was that, that bat breaker off the apron into the GTS and a, and a second GTS to put this one away. Hideo Watami was prepared to defend his championship against Wade Barrett, but those plans were changed at the last minute. And he was faced with a very game Chad Gable, whom he put away to once again keep hold of his TV title. And I've just gotten word that we have cameras in place as Wade Barrett is still with the Charlotte PD, but just like last week, Hideo Atami, he has no time to rest as he continues to celebrate his victory because he has no time to rest because he will defend his World Television Championship once again next week. He will defend his World Television Championship against the BBC prospect. And the nostalgia is over. It's about getting down to business. It appears that Lashley and Langston are kicking off this huge six-man tag team match. Mike Kyoto, ring that bell as we are underway for your main event. And let's go. This crowd is firmly behind the new day. I never thought I'd be saying that again, but I'm at the I'm at the get get the giggles out of the way as Lashley takes Biggie's head clean off with that Larry. Oh my god, what a shot. 
Like I said, Lashley has been in a foul mood ever since he lost that no disqual no no holds barred match two weeks ago to Big E. And now Big E gonna make sure he, he maintain his focus and his control or his demeanor as Bobby Lashley has him in in their corner. Lashley missed the tags to, to Ford. Oh, what a shot to the midsection right there. Oh, Ford, pressing down. No, oh, not what an amateur takedown by Montez Ford. The strength of Ford to take the bigger man down because you know there's no limit when it comes to, to the athlete, the caliber of Montez Ford. The sold out crowd here in Buffalo, obviously firmly behind the New Day. As Woods and, and Kofi are trying to get Big E rallied or is he going to make the tag it's going to reach oh no angelo dawkins has found the way to get in and now dawkins sends him into the corner and dog oh what a what a twisting big splash in the corner oh what a, what a jab no one takes his head clean off as biggie trying to find a way to make sure to remind everyone that he is not one to mess with. He is not one to mess with. And now the first tag of this New Day reunion. And here we go. Uh oh, Kofi. Kofi on the top rope. Double stomp. Oh my God. Just turn. He just turned Big Dog inside out with that stomp. You got to know WWE World Heavyweight Champion Apollo Crews is somewhere watching as his opponent is in action just seven days before they clash for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Snap bear takedown. Oh, what a kick to the spine. Kofi is psyching himself up. He's psyching. He want to make sure that he is ready. That's why he accepted this match. He wants to make sure that he is ready for next week. Oh, my God. What a cave-in double stomp. What a cave-in double stomp. Oh, now Big, now big Dog want to make sure. Oh, my God. What a, what a lariat. He want to make sure. That you don't discredit him because he is always ready for the smoke. Now once again, oh what a, what a big splash in the corner from Angelo Dawkins. Kofi's probably going to have to try to find a way to make the tab because once the BDC is in control, there is no one who can who can take it back without a fight. Oh my God, what a double what a double elbow! You know now a repeated elbow is like. Lashley getting in the face of Big E saying, yo, this is what you got to deal with. But he might, might regret that. What a beautiful drop kick by Kofi Kings to take advantage of the fact that Lashley took his eye off the ball. And now Lashley in serious trouble. Now, uh oh, now Woods is, is the legal man. Oh, targeting that, 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 that shoulder. And now, oh, what a rushing leg sweep by Woods. Woods making amends with Kofi Kingston after their brutal falling out, including a Falls Count Anywhere match. And now Woods want to make good on his promise that the pass is the pass. Oh, what a, what a shot to the face. What a shot to the face from Xavier Woods. Now oh, he's looking to pick the big man up, but he's looking to put all his weight down. As last day, he takes, it, takes him off his feet with that shoulder tackle. Lashley walking around with this man. Oh, no. The Dominator. Running power slam, but his foot was under the bottom rope. And now, oh, looking to make sure that he maintains focus and control. Oh, what a, what a spine buster from Lashley. Oh, Woods is in trouble. Lashley is seeing red. He's looking to break him in half. Looking to break him in half with the spear. No, oh. The athleticism of Woods was lost in the woods. Is that enough to put, put away the CHO? The chief her officer is down for the count. No, only a two. Woods is going to do a lot more to put this man down. Woods, oh, what a shot to the back of the head from, from Big E. Letting him know that he remember their beef. And now, oh, snapmare takedown. Kofi, oh, what a kick to the chest. Oh, what a, what a sliding form. And an elbow drop from Kofi. And a diving elbow drop from Woods. 
It's as if they never missed a step. It is as if they never missed a step. And now, uh-oh. New day. Boom, drop. I hope Apollo is watching. As the New Day, most specifically Kofi Kingston, is ready for a shot. Oh, Bobby tried to bounce back out of that one. Bouncing over. And a kick to the midsection. Lashley is in serious, rare trouble. He is rarely in trouble, but the New Day, they're on their reunion, so it, it is expected at this point. Vicky trying to rally up this crowd. Oh, it's been a long time since we've seen this. You know what this is. The Unicorn Stampede. They can do this because every time they, they can make the tag and Mike Hill is just like, I don't let them have it. Because this is a reunion. This is a big moment. And the friendship of these three men. Oh, what a what a beautiful sliding drop kick in the corner. And now Big E, now we're, we're running it back to that no holes barred match, that brutal encounter between these two. And now Lashley in serious trouble. Oh, and a sit out spine buster from Big E. Here's the cover. Put the legs two and three. No, only a two. Big Dog tried to break it up, but Xavier Woods had that scouted. And now Mike Hill trying to get in the way of Woods, trying to get him out of the ring. And now Big E, Big E. Oh, what a German suplex. Mike Hill having a little trouble keeping the, the chaos under control. But he is doing a fine job right now as, he's, as Big E is in firm control right now. Oh, and speaking of the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Apollo Crews is here and he's watching this match closely. Wait, what? What did he just motion to the prophets? He just gave he just gave the street prophets a, a motion as if and Kofi's taking can't take his eye off of Apollo Crews because that's the man he faces next week for the world title. Oh, oh, that's the that's the oh shit! The prophets are done playing by the rules. They are taking out Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. Oh no! No, my what a oh my god! What a fallout slam. Apollo with a smile on his face and now. Oh wait! Big Dog was probably going for that spear and break Kofi in half and make sure that Biggie was all alone, but Kofi, he's on a different level. Oh, trouble in paradise to Big Dog. A trouble in paradise. And Montez Ford is no different. Kofi is a rare breed right now. This crowd is behind Kofi. Oh no, Lashley. Lashley caught Langston slipping and has the hurt lock locked lock in. Will Big E tap? Will he tap? Will he tap? No! Langston broke the hole. Very few have done that Brody line. Big E just took Lashley's head off. Apollo is losing his marbles on the stage. The BDC's plan is falling apart. Lashley's in trouble. Do it. Do it. Midnight hour. The midnight hour. And Kofi Kingston looking back at the man he will challenge next week for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Telling Apollo this is his fate. Trouble in paradise. Kofi Kingston with all the momentum heading into next week as the New Day picks up the win over the BDC. Yoda will oversee this match as goosebumps are beginning to swell over my body. Kingston, Cruz, WWE World Heavyweight title on the line and we are underway. Let's get it on. Crowd 100% behind Kofi. Apollo brushing him off, saying it's all about him. And now Kofi trying to cave in the chest of the diamond. Looking to put this one away early. One, two, no, only a one. And just like that, Apollo is met that Kofi saying, yo, 
I can put you away just like that. Don't turn your back on me. You got to do a lot to put me down. Oh, went for a shot, a wild swing and a miss. Kofi is prepared. He is ready. Mono way mono. No sneak attacks. No shot dropping nobody on the, on the concrete. This is straight up. Bouncing him off the ropes. Leaping over him. And now Kofi. Oh, beautiful transition into the neck breaker. All this for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship between two men who once considered each other friends, but ever since Apollo joined the BDC, he has been basically all about that title and all about being the best. Because in his mind, he, he is tired of being considered lackluster. He is tired of being considered above average. He wants to go down in history as the best champion in this business. Oh, Kofi went for something, but Apollo had that scouted. And now Kofi taken down by Apollo, who is unleashing a fear of offense. What a night it has been for the champions here tonight. Every title has been retained so far. Will Apollo make it a clean sweep or will Kofi? Oh, wait. Kofi float over into the DDT. Will Kofi make the queen clean sweep go away when he leaves Brooklyn as the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion? Kofi sends Apollo into the corner. Oh, leaping into the repeated haymakers in the corner. Rolling them down into the uppercut. Kofi, oh, what a knee to the side of the temple. The champ, he got the champion rocked already. And the strength of, of, of Kofi into the Samoan drop. Will that Samoan drop be enough to put him away right here? No, only a one. Kofi has the champion in a very rare position saying, yo, you got to do a lot. You got to do a lot to put me down. You got to do a lot to keep me down. Oh, what a bicycle kick. That might be able to do it. Kofi being put on the shelf for three months. Oh, what a, what a spinning back heel kick. Kofi being put on the shelf for three months was a wake-up call for everyone that Apollo is done playing games. He is done taking a back seat. And if he was willing to do that to a friend, to a close ally, what makes you think he won't do that to a work? What, what do you think he will do to an uh, enemy? No, oh, he's trying to take out the elbow. But like Kofi said, his kids was not able to play with him. And that is, that is like an unwritten rule of the game. You do not mess with anyone's family and if they and if his kids are at the house crying because their dad is always in pain or because their dad can't can't play the latest xbox game with him because he has to rest up his neck oh come on the trash talking the arrogance of apollo saying he hoped that kofi didn't think this was going to be easy i don't think anyone thought this was going to be easy apollo it's all about respect which you have none Oh, what a beautiful drop kick. Beautiful drop kick by the champion. And now, uh oh. Apollo. Oh, what a power bomb. Just like that, Apollo will make you wish that you was anywhere else because that Apollo, that power bomb had to, had to be sent his tingling sensation. Oh, no. He, he contains his man, man hold over, over the, in the clutches. And a trifecta of power bombs right there. Talking all this trash. But Apollo has been able to back it up. So there's nothing anyone can do or say about it. Oh, and again. Number seven. Eight. Nine. Number, that was seven power bombs. Seven power bombs. I don't know why I counted nine, but seven power bombs. Uh, and once again, Apollo. I don't think anyone thought this was going to be easy. Just unleashing. This is, all, this is the same man that he's traveled up and down the roads together before the BDC came into the picture. And now Apollo 
The haymakers in the corner with a count of nine. Not even giving the crowd the satisfactory of counting to ten. Yes, MVP and Kofi go way back. Of course, he, he told you it was going to be like that. Well, what a, what a cutter. No oh, one a kick to the side of the face. He's, he's asking the question, why does Kofi got to be this way? Because Kofi is a fighter. He's a, he's a champion. I wish I could say the same for you. Your attitude makes it hard to believe that you are ever the heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, what a delay suplex. Just the arrogance of the champion. The arrogance, the confidence, the brashness of the champion. Six. Nine. Haymakers on one corner, six on the other. You flip it up, you get what you get. But Apollo is done playing up to the crowd. That's basically what he is doing with that because some, normally people would do all ten and let the crowd count along with him. But Apollo has not been that type of type of cat as of late. He is all about that title. He is all about being the best, being the diamond, the face of the WWE. And now he is about to make Kofi pay for challenging his position. Oh, what a superplex. What a superplex. Oh, what a beautiful elbow drop. The arrogance of the champion, not even hooking the leg because he thinks he got this one in the bag and a three, no, only a two. You shot, but that is the, that is the will of Kofi. He will not stop. He will not quit. What did John Moxley say to AJ Styles? You're going to have to kill him to beat him. And that's exactly what you might have to do. Go on, Apollo. Oh, kid. Kofi caught him. Kofi caught him. Slamming him down. And now he's switching it up into the single leg Boston Crab. The single leg Boston Crab. Apollo reaching. He's clutching because he has a series of, 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 of series of former knee injuries. And now he wants to, and is he going to reach to the rope? And he does. Forcing the rope break. But it's smart of Kofi's part to take out that knee. Because most of, of Apollo's offense is a flashy offense. And now, oh, he's going back to the knee. Oh, but Apollo was quick to grab that rope. And Kofi... He doesn't really care. He wants to target. He sees he, he has a, a weak limb from the champion. And he's going to do whatever it takes to weaken it. And a DDT to the kneecap. That tingling sensation that went from your ankle all the way up to your knee. And now, oh, once again, into the single leg Boston Crab. The single leg Boston Crab. Will Kofi force Apollo to tap here? Mike Kyoto in perfect position. Perfect form. All he is there to count is, is the is Willie Tab. No, he found a way and he brushes him off. All oh, the arrogance. The arrogance of the champion. Saying he can't carry the company with one leg. Oh, but he missed that knee. I guess that knee buckled. And Kofi took advantage. Took took full advantage when he backed up. And when he once again targeting that knee. Once again targeting that knee. And now Kofi. Oh, wrecking it back. And now, oh, the champion is down. The champion is in pain. Oh, what a, what a, what a leg sweep. A dragon leg sweep to the champion. Oh, this come back into play. And now Kofi has the champion. Oh, once again, kick to that injured knee. He has the champion. Right where he wants him. Taking him to the top. This crowd here in Brooklyn rallying him behind. This head says a takedown and oh, oh no 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 no. The champion, the champion. Avalanche set out power bomb. He caught him with that avalanche set out power bomb and he ain't done with another emphatic power bomb. Now he, he collapsed into the cover. Will this be enough to put away Kofi Kingston? No, that is a negative. 
Kobe was going for a head scissors takedown, but, but Apollo caught him with the avalanche, set out power bomb, and set him up with another power bomb. And that just knocked him out for long enough for two. And now, once again, Apollo only ain't won this time. He is, like I said, he is done playing up to the crowd. He is done playing games. Brushing off the, the damage to the knee and all with the snake eyes in the corner. And it looked like that snake eyes in the corner might have might have scraped the, the forehead of, a, of Kofi. Knife edge chops to the chest and his little, oh, he a wild swing and a miss and now he, he can get with that form. He has the challenger rocked. And now Kofi, oh, Kofi sending him to the outside. Now Kofi, oh, the shoulder tackle. To the mid-session and now what is Kofi? What has he got in mind here? Oh, uh, Kofi. Kofi, trust fall to the outside. Kofi Kingston, you took food off his table. He's coming to collect the debt. My God, what a, what a sequence. Kofi with a trust fall on the champion. Now, oh now, Kofi. Kofi, new day, boom drop. That is always a prelude to what is in store. We saw him do this to Bobby Lashley seven nights ago. Trouble in paradise to the champion. New champion. New champion. Count it. Count it. One, two, three. New champion. No. Somehow Apollo found a way to get out of Kofi. He ain't about to let, let him. He's not about to let him recover. I don't know if it was instincts or whatever. Diving elbow drop. A diving elbow drop. And now Kofi. Kofi. Set him up. SOS. SOS. Will he save us from Apollo's reign as champion? No, only a two. My God, this is indeed awesome. My blood is boiling. My the goosebumps are bigger than ever. And now Kofi, Kofi setting him up for another trouble in paradise. Oh, oh Apollo sidestepped him. Apollo sidestepped him into another power bomb. Kofi said, you were his friend. And Apollo said, he's not his friend. Oh, come on. He took off that the turnbuckle pad. Come on, ref. He has ill intention. Come on, ref. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. Snake eyes onto the exposed turnbuckle. Is, is that not, is that not a, that's not a DQ? I guess you could say referee's discretion or whatever the case because of the importance of this match. Oh, no. I know what he was doing. We saw this. We saw this happen in Liverpool. Will Kofi tap? Will Kofi tap again to this? Will he tap? No, he found a way to get out of it. He rolled through. He, the passion, the will of Kofi. He was not looking for deja vu. He got Apollo. He got him stunned at this point, and he sends him crashing to the outside. He sends him crashing to the outside as this crowd here in Brooklyn is jacked for what they are about to unleash. And it looks like, oh, now Mike Kyoto wants to return the turnbuckle pad. And now, oh, the cave in on the outside. Three. Looking to cave in the chest of Apollo on the outside. Now Kofi got to get him back on the inside. It's this crowd here in Brooklyn. They are ready. They are ready for a new champion. I'm ready for a new champion. Send him into the corner. Oh, nobody home. Nobody home. Into the bicycle kick. And on instinct alone, Kofi rolled to the outside to catch a breather. This crowd here in Brooklyn. As, as Apollo sends Kofi back on the inside. Wait, when did, when did, when did he take the... He took the turnbuckle pad off again? Come on! Not again! Oh, disrespectful, and that just pissed off Kofi. That just pissed off Kofi. You want to mention his kids? You want to mention his family? Here's your, here's your receipt. Kofi, 
Oh, what repeated shots he is unleashing. Oh, what a kick. He has the champion. He has the champion rocked in the corner. Kofi said, oh, you want to mention my family? He is to my family. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He got caught. He got caught. Off the exposed, exposed turnbuckle. Ball game suplex driver. No, no, no. Not this way. Not this way. Kick out Kofi. Damn it. Kofi Kingston has Apollo Crews number, but Apollo once again felt he needed to cheat to win by exposing the turnbuckle twice. Right here. Oh my God, what did we just, what did we just see? Right here, I thought it was over for Kofi. With this avalanche set out, power bomb into the regular power bomb. This right here, a beautiful trust fall by Kofi, showing the will that he had to win that title and even brought back the New Day. Boom, drop. But nevertheless, and he, he even right here, the SOS, I thought he was going to win right here so many times. But right here, for the second time, he tried to put him, Apollo tried to take, take him out with the exposed turnbuckle. And he mentioned the family, and that sent Kofi into a frenzy. And that set him up for the ball game suplex driver. And that was enough to put Kofi Kingston away. And I don't care what anyone says, you can't take anything away from Kofi Kingston. He had that man right there beat. He had that man's number countless times, but Apollo Crews had to cheat twice. The first time the official was a little lenient because of the importance of this match, but the second time shouldn't have happened. Kofi Kingston should be standing here as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, but there is nothing that can be done. It was a clean sweep for the champions here tonight. The IC title was retained, the tag team titles was, was retained, the women's title was retained, and the women. That is what is all about the World Television Championship. The challenger, Alexander, the champion, Atami. 30 minutes on the clock as this is under golden rules. And here we go. Big fight feel for this is our main event of the evening. Elbow and collar tire by both men. Oh, Atami. Overpowering Alexander and pushing him into the corner. Mike gonna have to step in there at some point and break this up. Will there be a clean break? Yes, there will be. But Tommy proving that yeah, yeah, you gotta do a lot to, to take this title away from me. Oh, and Tommy takes full advantage of that exchange right there. And now Tommy switching it up into targeting that arm a little bit, which is smart. Pick a body part and stick with it. And also, oh. Alexander has been doing some very well scouting because that arm is surgically repaired but Tommy quickly switches gears and makes sure that he targets that left arm of Alexander. Oh, and a knee drop, stomping on that elbow, which is smart because you take away that, that arm power, you take away that lumbar check. Oh, and a leaping clothesline by Alexander with a kip up. Already proving his point that he would do whatever it takes to win. And now, oh, what a beautiful elbow drop by Alexander. If you're new around here, the rules of the Golden Rules is quite simple. 30 minutes on the clock. 20-second count out if the action ever spills to the outside. But hopefully these competitors will try their best to keep the action in the ring. And as uh, Tommy rains down lethal kicks to the midsection of Alexander in the corner. Oh, and the boot to the side of the face. Cedric trying to make sure that he didn't knock a tooth out of his mouth, which is something he might do because he, he kicks with the intent of breaking something. Oh, now possibly going for a vertical or a brain buster, but Alexander had that scouted, got out of the way. Oh, what a bulldog right there by Cedric. Alexander looking to make sure the, the momentum stays in his favor as he packs him to the mat. And now Alexander surveying the situation. Oh, what a split leg moonsault. Here's the cover two. Are we looking at a new champion right here? No, only a two right there. Cedric, he, got, he knows he got to do a lot more to keep this man down. And he's possibly going to do that with an elbow drop. Oh, nobody home for that elbow. And that's the same elbow that Hideo has been targeting. What a, what a beautiful wrist lock suplex. And a kick to the spot. Like I said, like I said at the top, Pick a body part and stick to it. it Looks like a Tommy wants to make sure that Cedric 
Can't lift him up for the lumbar check. Oh, now, Tommy. Oh, beautiful transition into the arm bar. Look, looking to make, uh, make Cedric Alexander tap and sit on the ring. Will he tap? Will he tap right here at 08? Roll through into the, oh, what a shot. What a shot to the face to break the hole. He didn't have it in, in a lot there long enough. Oh, Cedric Alexander tried to take, take advantage. And now, Tommy. oh, once again, targeting that arm. He got to, Cedric got to take the top wells. He won't be able to shake that kick, though. This is your main event of the evening for the World Television Championship. Still to come is the State of the Rebellion Address. I don't even know what Daniel Bryan, what does he even have to say? Who knows, but we're going to focus on this incredible main event right here. The Tommy has been incredible as the television champion thus far. Will he be able to maintain his hold? Now what is he going for right here? Falcon Zero from the top. Beautiful. What a beautiful Falcon Zero by Hideo Tommy. And now Tommy. Oh, Tommy, you know what this is. He tried to do, he, he's been pulling this out as of late. The Brutalizer. The Brutalizer in the center of the ring. Mike Kyoto, either go, he's either going to tap or pass out. Will Cedric tap or pass out? Oh, the, the Well of Alexander. Oh, what an elbow to the face. And another elbow. I'm pretty sure that cut over at Tommy Hill since his last few encounters. Oh, what a roundhouse kick. But I would hate for him to open up that wound once again because once you draw blood, that's when that's when adrenaline starts kicking in. Now once again, Tommy raining down those kicks. Alexander, oh what a drop kick in the in the face! And oh oh no, no, it looks like look, look like one his boot just cut Cedric in the in the square in the forehead. And now Tommy hyping himself up. Going for the double knees. Nobody home. Roll through. I don't want a four. There you see a live shot of that limo that has been parked outside all night. Whomever is in it, obviously picking their spot for when they want to make their announcement. And speaking of picking their spots, oh, what a beautiful pop-up cutter by Cedric Alexander. Less than 25 minutes on the clock. And now Alexander with the wave of momentum shifted back in his corner. Delay vertical suplex. Like I said, he has the backing of an entire corporation. Will he be able to take out arguably one of the most dominant champions in the history of this profession? What a knife that shot roundhouse kick. Ooh, 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 oh, he missed out of that one. And now he's gonna bounce back into old Flandom face first. The wave of momentum Hideo Atami had is just, oh, look at the chest. Look at the chest of Atami. The redness, the soreness. Cedric letting that blood that drips from his forehead fuel him as he sends Atami crashing to the outside. He was tripped, tangled up in, that, in the ropes, but he got out the second time. Cedric begging Atami to get to his feet. Look at Alexander. Look at the eyes of Alexander. Oh, what a leaping lariat from the apron to the floor. Mike Kyoto starting, restarting his count. Oh, what is Cedric going for? Possibly a power bump on the outside. Boy, oh, what a roll through. What a transition by Tommy. What a beautiful transition by Tommy. Show the tackle. Oh, what a, what a boot. That shoulder tackle did not knock him off his feet, but that boot did just that as he sent Alexander crashing through that LED post. Targeting that open wound, and now the fight has spilled to the outside. They have, they have a little leeway, if you will. They have until the count of 20 to get back into the ring, as opposed to the usual 10 count. Oh, now Tommy, oh, what a boot to the side of the face. Kyoto at the count of 11. Oh, what is it, Tommy? What does he have in mind here? Cedric went for a power bomb on the outside. Now, Tommy about to make him eat his words. And a power bomb on the eighth on the barricade. 
We saw that same thing happen to Shane, Don Shane Thorne during that Rusev encounter. Well, the same piece is it all but over for Cedric Alexander at this point. And oh, it looked like a, a day was going setting up for the GTS. Look for oh, wait, that Tommy's back gave out. A Tommy's back gave out. Cedric, Cedric, one bar check. He's not going for the pin. He wants to make sure that Tommy is down for the count. As he's going for a second lumbar check. He has the champion right where he wants him. But he I guess he's going to take that chance. He's going to take another chance. Frog splash. Cedric. 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 We have a new champion. Prime time Alexander is upon us. What a match. Cedric Alexander brought his A game. Hideo Tommy brought his A game. Even though it was short, it got the point across that Cedric Alexander wants that World Television Championship and he got it. That beautiful frost flash right there was enough. And you can't dismiss the reign of Hideo Tommy as television champion. But on this night, Cedric Alexander Prove all of us wrong and prove to the world that he could get the job done. The reign of Alexander, the reign of prime time Alexander has begun. Beatdown Corporation has all the gold. All the blood, all the sweat, all the bumps and bruises has paid off. Love him or hate him, he's earned this win. Congratulations, Cedric. Fresh off his last man standing victory two weeks ago at Carnage Gold Rush. That brutal assault at the hands of Rusev later in the evening. Pete has that look of bloodlust in his eyes. And it appears that Rusev is looking to be that roadblock. As he has exited the ring and is standing in the rampway. And Pete Dunne. He's making a feline to the brewer who left him a bloody mess in Brooklyn. And Dunn and Rusev are not even going to wait for the entrance of Apollo Crews as they brawl on the outside. And Daniel Bryan is just waiting inside the ring letting Rusev handle this. But the bell has not rung because Apollo has not made his entrance just yet. But the fight is on between these two who clashed once upon a time at the Survivor Series for the WWE Championship. And Rusev, whether you believe it or not, has a beef with Pete Dunne because he is the reason that Rusev missed a number of weeks of action due to him having his head crushed on that ring post. And now, oh, the brawl has spilled to the outside. The brawl has spilled to the outside. And now Apollo, despite not being out here yet, has agreed to be in this match. And MVP is holding the company responsible if any injury happens to the world champion who is making a feed line to the ring towards Daniel Bryan. And now Daniel Bryan with a drop kick to the outside. And there you, you heard the bell. This match is officially underway. The only way to win this match is by pinfall or submission inside the ring. And since this match is spilling all over the, the place to aid Mike Kyoto for the time being, Jessica Carr will also be around ringside with Mike counting the, the final fall when it matters. Oh, Daniel Bryan has the title. Oh, and a shot to the skull. Enjoy that hold of the title belt that you have because that is the closest you'll ever get because you are not no longer in the main event of WrestleMania. This is a this is the main event of WrestleMania teaming up. An unlikely duo as the brawl has spilled to the outside as Pete Dunne takes the fight to Rusev in, in the sold-out crowd here in St. Louis. What a night, what a chaotic night it has been, and what a way to run. Oh, what a DDT on the concrete. That fight is spilled to the outside as this fight out here between Daniel Bryan and the world champion. Oh, what a hit since the takedown. Daniel Bryan just showing his crowd in St. Louis, glancing over at that world title, knowing that he could have been involved in that match. But this man had other plans for him, and now he's unleashing his fury over the WWE World Champion who he left laying at the conclusion of Carnage Gold Rush two weeks ago. What a, oh, what, what a takedown. Had no brace for impact, did Apollo, and now Dunn has a steel chair. Oh, what a shot to the back of the head of Rusev. This beef between Rusev and Pete Dunn reignited back at Carnage Gold Rush when Dunn was left a bloody mess 
at the hands of this man who we all thought was against the rebellion, but that was not the case. And now Dunn has the trash can, looking to take out the trash. Oh my God, what a cheese to the skull. And that, it looked like that, that shot to the skull just opened Rusev up. This is becoming a bloody, a bloody, a blood fest, if you will. Oh my God. And now, Dane Bryan has the world champion rocked. He agreed to this match despite MVP. He, he, he tried to speak against it, but he decided to come back. Oh wait, speaking of comebacks, Rusev. Rusev taking firm, turn firm control after being busted open. And now Pete Dunn, oh, bouncing him off the, bouncing him off that production crate. And now once again, and now, no, 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 no. Oh my God, what a, what a half and half suplex. Look like he landed on the back of his neck. No one now, Bulldog. You gotta know Paul Heyman is chopping at the bit because if Apollo is injured during this match, MVP, with, a, with an entire corporation will more than likely hold this company financially responsible for any injury that happens to the world champion. And speaking of injuries, Pete Dunn might be injured after landing on the back of his neck. He might be done, pun intended. And now Rusev tossing this man to the outside, back to, back to ringside, if you will. As Daniel Bryan takes firm control of the world champion. Oh wait, the world champion trying to bounce back. Oh, what a leaping, oh, what a larian and a kip up. Love him or not, the world champion is, in, is on a whole nother ball game. Winning that title back in Survivor Series. Pop up into the cutter. Winning that title back in Survivor Series, ironically defeating that man Rusev to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And now Rusev has done oh what a moshka kick to the back of the neck what a moshka kick by the former wwe champion and now apollo cruz looking to send his own message like i said during the entrances the rebellion and bdc have been barred from ringside if anybody oh my god what a power bomb. If anyone gets involved, they will be fined and suspended for a month, and they do not want to miss that WrestleMania payday. They do not want to miss WrestleMania. Oh, what a what a kick to what, he blocked that boot. And now Daniel Bryan bump chest into the drop kick. The exchange between these two have been incredible. And now, despite their disdain for him, they oh what a roundhouse kick. Dunn is still out cold after being dropped with his neck on the outside and now that Moshka kick and now Dunn is about to be met with the pit. The pit. Oh wait, he got the elbows. To the, he, he found a way to get out of it. Dunn, Dunn, the will of the bruiser. Wait, X-Flex, X-Flex, and a knee plus by Daniel Bryan. A knee plus. And now Daniel Bryan has the world champion right where he wants him. Oh, Dunn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Pete Dunn. He, he has something going on, but Apollo, he blocked whatever Daniel Bryan was going for in another leaping clothesline. And now, oh, wait, he, he dropped Rusev once again. And now, Dunn, Dunn. Oh, he has him right where he wants him. Better in! That's it. Dunn got this one in the bag. Dunn got this one right to. Oh, what the hell? What? No. Paula, what are you doing? Why am I surprised? And now Daniel Bryan taking full advantage. What the hell are you doing? No, 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 no. Knee plus to the number one contender. I don't even think Daniel Bryan expected that. They was just brawling on the outside. Nevertheless, Daniel Bryan has defeated Pete Dunne thanks to Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews, that's true. What the? Oh, 
Paulo is, is in for business for himself. He says that is your receipt for that attack at the end of Carnage Gold Rush, but that ain't the story. What the hell is Pete? What the hell is Apollo doing? He agreed. He agreed to this. And now it's down to. He's sending a message to his number one contender that he is going to end his feeble dream of taking this place. Oh no 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 no! Don't do it, Apollo! Don't do it! Oh my God! A power bomb off the apron! Come on, Mike, check on him. What did you just do? In the event of the evening. This crowd is ready. Zack Ryder is starting for his team, and Randy Orton doing the same. The winner advances to the semifinals. Mike Kyoto is your official for this one. The bell has rung, and we are on the way as this crowd is firmly behind. Randy, Ar Randy Orton and Rated RKO. Oh, went for a wild form, but right, no, Orton got out of the way, smooth, and now, oh, what a drop kick to the chest. Looking to drop kick the air from the lungs of the former television champion. Oh, Orton, like I said, this is his first time in nearly a year that he could be the old rider. Had that net breaker scouted and burst into a net breaker of his own. Beautiful transition by Ryder on what a knee drop. What a night in that's been. This is your final match of the of the evening, your main event, with the winner advancing in the number one contenders tag team tournament and also the return, the reunion of rated RKO, but the rebellion looking to stop that damn this track. Oh, what a back elbow, a double back elbow by Ryder and Barrett. Crowd wants edge. They may get it. Oh, Barrett. Bouncing off the rope. Into a splash. This man is no slouch. Former multi time champion, wherever he's been. Associating himself since with the Rebellion since Survivor Series. Speaking of the Survivor Series, the Rebellion thought they had Vince McMahon away as chairman and CEO, but. He found a loophole because Daniel Bryan never officially signed the contract as a member of the Rebellion. Seeing as he com he c committed the pin, that saw Team Rebellion defeat Team WWE. So the consequences are null and void. Team Rebellion still defeats Team WWE, but the consequences are null and void. And Vince McMahon is back. So the Rebellion, Vince McMahon is, has vowed that the Rebellion, the fall of that group, will start at WrestleMania and if he if he's watching this care carefully it might be the same feat with that beautiful drop kick by Orton as Rated RKO could take eliminate two members of the rebellion from the tournament. Speaking of the rebellion you saw in that confrontation with Shawn Michaels that the added stipulations for that Triple H versus Aleister Black match at WrestleMania, if Black wins, Triple H must retire. He is done in ring, and he will be the number one contender. But if Triple H wins, not only will Triple H forfeit his number one contendership, Aleister Black will be fired. So the rebellion, the fall of the rebellion, could very well take place at the show of shows. And now Ryder, full advantage over Edge right here. Got him down to one knee into the DDT. A lot of people are not fans of Zack Ryder, but he has he has been able to hold his own against the, the top talents, including the likes of John Cena back in last September at WWE Ground Zero, where he defeated Cena to become the number one contender to the then WWE Championship. So he, he has been able to hold his own against the very likes of the Orton, reaching for the tag, and now Ryder. Oh, and an elbow to the spine. The surgery repaired neck is coming into play for this one for Zack Ryder. Because if he target that neck, he target the move that basically put Edge on the shelf. Oh, he went for a big boot. And now Edge, Edge, execution. 
The execution by Edge. The DDT, is that enough to put him away? We're only 8-2. Edge is not even frustrated. He's like, okay, I got to put some more hurt on this, on this kid. Okay, these two grizzled vets a ball game if they have their way. Oh, and a crucifix slam. Ryder. Oh, and a big boot. He connected this time. And speaking of the rebellion, their leader, Daniel Bryan, he has his own task ahead of him. As you just saw that message from Brock Lesnar, he just basically said he will F Daniel Bryan up at WrestleMania just because he can, because he gets paid to show up at WrestleMania to fight. And that's exactly what he's going to do with Ryder. Ryder, the arrogance is coming into the display, and Zack Ryder is about to meet the Apex Predator. Lariat, and a second one, and a trifecta. And now Orton looking to tap into that place that brought him multiple championships in the past, a draping DDT. Barrett is getting frustrated that Ryder took his eye off the ball, but this is what he's got to, he's about to get real more frustrated if, if Randy Orton has his way as he's pounding to the mat, because you know as this Viper is about to strike, RKO! Randy Orton takes it, takes out of way, Barrett. He's staring down at his tag team partner, asking him does he want to take this one because he could have put him away just like that. Oh, what an uppercut. He asked as if he wanted to take this one. There he goes, makes the tag. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to witness the successful reunion of, oh, about to say, successful reunion of Ray RKO Edge once again taking clear advantage of Wade Barrett. Stomping on the back rider. He's in his sights. Edge. Spear! The RKO was the setup and the spear was the execution. Rated RKO advances to the semifinals. If you bet against Rated RKO, I'll have, I, I don't know what to tell you, but Rated RKO for the first time since 2007 is successful in the middle of that ring. That RKO is the setup and this spear, the beautiful spear by Edge was the execution. Nevertheless, Edge and Orton showed up and showed out. And there you see the current tag team champions watching all this unfold as they should because now we're down to four teams. Next week is the Good Brothers versus the War Raiders and in two weeks is rated RKO versus FTR. Thank you so much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. What a show and what a road to WrestleMania. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Match will advance to the finals in two weeks. Anderson started for his team. Bro will start for his Raiders, Good Brothers, semifinals, and we are underway. Senior official Mike Kyoto will be your official for this match. Both men just pacing, taking their time on this one. Anderson saying you got to do a lot more elbow and call a tie up right there. And the power of Rowe coming into full display right here as he backed him into the corner. Mike's going to step in between these two. And a cheap shot by Carl Anderson. But I might, I might bet against that because uh. Oh, what a Superman punch! What a Superman punch by Rowe. Like I just said, he pissed him off. He gave him a cheap shot, and he just responded in kind. And now Rowe unleashing a fury of offense on Carl Anderson right there. Tackling him into the corner with a knee to the side of the face and chest. Well, tonight it has been, and we are going to close out tonight's broadcast hearing from WWE World Heavyweight Champion Apollo Crews, who has been very silent since his actions against Pete Dunn. Oh, he targeted that arm, the previously injured arm, and now Anderson looking to put Raymond Rowe away early. Only a one. You saw that knee to the arm. Raymond Rowe survived a brutal, a brutal accident a couple of years ago, and he, he shouldn't even be here, but you already know what he wants to do. He wants to become number one contenders for the Tag Team Champions and go to WrestleMania. He's got to go through the Good Brothers and whoever wins between FTR and Rated RKO if he wants to get that job done and to live that dream as Anderson. Oh! Anderson has full control of this situation right here, right now. And he has him into the corner. Oh, what a European uppercut. Speaking of European uppercuts, 
the master of European up It is official. It will be Bobby Lashley versus Cesaro for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. And all it took was the champion challenging the challenger, which is very rare, but Cesaro has been a fighting champion. Oh, what, what a body splash by Big LG. Cesaro has been a fighting champion. He wants to make sure that he had, he, that he has the best challengers and he has the best challenger at WrestleMania. No, oh, what a big boot by Big LG. He has him down for the count. Uh oh, bro. He tried to, whatever Gallows had in store, but Bro had it very well scouted. And now, oh, with a knee to the side of the face as well. Oh, what a discus for! He was out on his feet before he even hit the mat. Bro is a hard hitter, former United States champion. Would have been Intercontinental champion. But he failed in that task, and he wants to bounce back by winning the tag team. Todd is with his best friend. Did whatever he was going for. Luke Gallows had that scout. Oh, what a what an uppercut to the throat. Sends him into the corner. Makes the tag. We already know what type of offense. Oh, what, a, what another uppercut by LG. And a boot to the side of the face. Oh, bro is in serious trouble. Will he be able to bounce back? Welcome back. The Raiders have regained control as Rowe makes the tag to Hanson. The winners of this match will advance to the finals of the number one contenders tag team tournament. Oh, and he takes his head off with that lariat. What a double team tandem offense by the Raiders. And another splash. As I said, the winners of this match will advance to the finals of the number one contender tag team tournament on the final edition of Carnage before WrestleMania. As before the commercial break, Roll was in serious trouble, but he found a way to bounce back. And now Hansen in firm control of Carl Anderson. He's making sure he know what the taste of that turnbuckle is. And now the bigger man of the Raiders have this one in the bag. Oh, what a gut buster. Oh, he ain't done. He ain't done. Into the senton. Just knocking the win. Oh, he just knocked the face off of, Carl, of Luke Gallows, excuse me, as he has Carl Anderson in serious trouble. Oh, he makes the tag. He's in between a rock and a hard place. Oh, what a gut buster. Into the knee. Oh, my God. I don't know if Carl Anderson is counting stars, but I'm pretty sure he is. Oh, he slipped out of that one. He slipped out away from that one. Into the Larry Sinema crash into the outside. Whoa. Got into the face of Cerro. Now he, oh, he ran out of the way because Hanson was about to come at him. Cerro helping her husband up. Oh, and a cheap shot to Hanson. Sarah just staring a hole in Carl Anderson, who is just loving the momentum that the big LG and himself has gained at this point in the match. And now roll back in. Oh, what a cheap shot. Bouncing him off the ropes. Oh, what a kick to the face. Oh, that kick might have opened Raymond Rowe up. Oh, now this kick might do worse. Oh, what a boot to the face. A rocket kick. A rocket kick by Anderson. Is that going to be enough to put him away in advance of the tournament? No, Hanson found a way to get out of that one. Oh, he, he took out LG, but he ain't about to take out this gun stun. Gun stun out of nowhere. Sorry, Randy. And now the momentum is in the favor of the Good Brothers. Bouncing him off the rope. LG caught him. A time and drop into the big boom. Just nearly took his head off. Sarah's in shock. And now LG looking to take the breath out of Rowe and advance in the tag team tournament right here. And a three, no, only a two. Somehow he got up out of it. And LG is shocked. Oh, oh my God. The, no one that big should be able to do a roundhouse kick, but he does it with ease. Back elbow to the open wound. And now Gallows. 
choke slam. Gallows, he wants, he, they, they know that they are close and he wants to make sure that they advance into the tournament. They will love nothing more than to face the Street Profits for the tag team. Titles all the one, two, step. And now he's about to float over for the three. Is this it? Oh, he, Hansen found a way to get out of Oh, Mike Kyoto's in trouble. All hell is broken loose. All hell is broken loose as Carl Anderson inadvertently knocked over Mike Kyoto. He's probably going to get a fine for that one. But there's neither here nor there at the moment as LG took care of Hansen again with that roundhouse kick. And now sends him into the corner. Rose in serious trouble. He is psyching himself out. They know what's the story. Oh, the body splash in the corner. We are, the advantage is all for is all for him. And now, uh, oh, and a double team body drop. Rose is in serious trouble. At, once again at this point in the game, but now Anderson, Anderson, oh, what a sent on. Hansen is back on the apron. He, he is begging his partner for the tag. Oh, and a knee to the spot. He is begging for the tag. And a, oh, and a belly to back suplex. Oh, and a knee drop. Sarah's proclamation of the Raiders becoming tag team champions might be snuffed out by the Good Brothers. We might need someone to step in and check on that open wound. Bro is in serious trouble. Oh, Luke, 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 into the big boot. Oh. Luke took he took his eye off the ball and Hansen is finally legal and he's begging him with a lariat. Hansen, oh my god, that, that lariat and the trifecta. And he stared down. Oh, what a shot. Oh the, the Raiders. Oh the Raiders. Possibly he has him up. Samoan driver. That's it. That is it. That is all she wrote. War Raiders to advance to the stood up. Oh my god, I thought the Raiders advanced to the finals. How did he kick out of the Samoan driver? Boston can't believe what they are seeing. This is indeed awesome. And all of this is for the number one contendership. Oh. Oh, what a knee into the face. Roll through into the Bronco Buster. The Raiders have re-solidified their dominance and Carl Anderson is begging for the tag. But Roll cut, cut him off and they're cutting the ring off in this one. Uh-oh. Roll through. No one ever elbow to the open wound. And another big boot. I don't know what neither team got to do at this point in the game. We have nearly reached the 20 minute mark. Oh, what a pump kick. And again, in a great train. The freight train of Big LG has snuffed the life, and that super kick hadn't done any favors for Roe as well. And now, Anderson. Begging Roe to get to his feet. Double A spine buster the spine on the pine. Oh, I thought he was possibly setting up for that punt kick. But he's got something else in store. Anderson. Gun star. That's it. That is it. Roe is out. Two. No, no. Hansen once again break the count. And Luke. Oh, and a cheap shot. Anderson did not appreciate him breaking up that pin. But that's the name of the game. You got to do what you got to do. Oh, possibly going for another gun stun. But Roe had that scouted. Into a Superman punch. A bloody Roe. 
trying to find his wits about him as Hanson makes his way back to the to the apron. And another Superman punch. The blood is flowing and Hanson is begging for the tag. Will roll. Give him his wish. Yeah, he does. And now both men. Bounce him off the rope. Pop up. Thor's hammer. Thor's hammer. That's it. Kyoto counted it out. He is not kicking out. Two and three. No one. What the? What? Anderson just kicked out of Thor's hammer. Hansen can't believe it. I can't believe it. What does he have to do to keep this man down? Welcome back. Hansen is letting Anderson tag in. Luke Gallows is as if he's begging the big man for a fight. And no one gallows. That isn't something you willingly ask for. But here we are. And no. Take his head off with that lariat. Take his head once again off that lariat. And a big boot this time. Oh, pop going for the choke slam again. Big LG is all for him on his own. And he connects with that choke slam. Hook of the leg. And this is enough to put him away. And 3 0. Rowe thought he was going to have to break it, but Hansen found a way to kick out of that choke slam. We are still in the process of this number one contenders tag team tournament semifinals between the War Raiders and the Good Brothers. And man, it has been a war all throughout the commercial break. Oh, what a shot! Oh, he's scooping him up. He's scooping him up. Oh, and he plants him. Gallows is out for the count. And now Rowe made the tag again. Oh, and with, with, with a receipt to Carl Anderson with that cheap shot. But that is all for the name of the game. They want to be the number one contenders, and they're going to have to get past the Good Brothers to advance to the finals. There's the tag. Uh-oh. And this might be the perfect moment and opportunity. The fallout. The fallout. That's it. Count to 100. Kyoto, get down there to make that count because the War Raiders advance to the finals of the tournament. What a match. You can't take nothing away from either team. They brought their A game. That gun stun, body splash, even a two impactful choke slams and that one two step they brought their a game but this right here was what 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 put it away the fallout the diving lead drop from hansen to the big lg right here once again in slow motion all oh, the impact but nevertheless you see the blood flowing from rose's forehead that is what they will do to be considered the best duo in the game today and now they have one week to rest and to study tape as they face the winners of next week's semi-final matchup between Rated RKO and FTR. Because like I said, that Royal Rumble and now has the opportunity to let the locker room know what she brings to the table a mere weeks before WrestleMania. Both women have been training. There's the bell. And here we go. Big fight feel as this is your main event of the evening. Here we go as Ronda is begging Becky to make the first move. She says, make your move. Well, Becky, oh, elbow, call a tie up. And now Becky overpowering somehow Ronda into the corner. And Mike's going to step through these two women to make sure that they break it clean. Oh, and Becky getting her shots in while she can. And it looks like a smirk came across the face of Ronda as she charged her with that shoulder tackle. It's like she waiting for Becky to make a mistake. And hitting her in the face like that, made a mistake. All this training that both women did prior to this match is going to come into play. But I don't think any type of training that Becky can do will prepare her for the caliber of athlete that is Ronda Rousey. Cam Spades has been looking for a changing of the guard by getting rid of Becky, Charlotte, and somehow Tessa Blanchard got involved as the dark horse woman of the WWE being taken out by Ronda. But that is neither here nor there as Ronda it's already solidifying her dominance over Becky and Holt. Both women, they are key in using arm bars and various submissions targeting the arm. And now Ronda is doing smart by targeting 
the arm to take away the advantage of this arm bar. Now she got the arm, arm bar and the ref's going to break it. There's no way she's going to be able to pick up the win in the ropes and she clearly broke, broke it. And now, oh, Becky with a shot to the face. Got her down to a knee. Took, took clear advantage of Ronda getting back in the ring. But now Ronda takes her head clean off with that there and a roll through. Ronda is feeling herself, which may or may not come back to bite her. But Becky, she's quickly realizing who she's stepping into the ring with. As Becky, excuse me, as Ronda has gone on record. It doesn't matter whether it's the octagon or the ring. She owns everything that she walks into the walks into. And now she's looking to own Becky as she continues to target that arm. Oh, she might have just snapped it out of place. Like I said, the beef between Ronda and Becky all started because of the situation involving Camp Space and I guess you could say the four horsewomen of the WWE. Oh, and another arm. Because if, if they don't even have to worry about the situation involving Bailey and Sasha, and you clearly heard what they had to say. Oh, no, no, no. Ronda plants. Ronda just planted her. And just like that. Oh, come on. Ronda, come on. You ain't got over. She was focused on that turnbuckle. And now Becky firing up. I guess you could say this is her last chance. Oh, what a knee to the, oh, oh, excuse me, a back kick to the face. Becky, she has Ronda. And now, oh, the sins of Ronda is coming back to, to bite her as she sent her into that exposed turnbuckle. And now, Becky, Mike Kyoto is like, she, she did it to herself, and now she's got to, bang, oh, she bounced her face first. And now, Becky charged. No, Becky just made a mistake and went broke first into that exposed turnbuckle. I don't know if her emotions got the better of her or what, but we saw the same mistake recently by Kofi Kingston on Carnage Gold Rush. And now Ronda taking full advantage, and she has Becky right where she wants her with this emphatic Piper's pit. And, and if this happens enough times during that women's elimination tag, then Camp Space will be victorious. And Atlanta Ronda Rousey with the controversial victory over Becky Lynch on Carnage. Whether you love the outcome or not, Ronda just proved that she will do whatever it takes to pick up that win as she put it away with that emphatic Piper's pick. But Ronda Rousey's first single victory on Monday Night Carnage is not without controversy, but it's a win nonetheless for the former U UFC champion. But that's tactic is not without a doubt from the mind of, of that woman making her way to the ring side area and that's the leader of Camp Space, Shayna Baszler. Like I said, if this happens, then there's no hope for Becky Lynch and company when it comes to that eight woman elimination tag team match. What the? T Tessa Blanchard! She just took Ronda's head clean off with that steel chair and staring a hole in Shayna Baszler. As I mentioned, oh, Edge is starting for the scene, which is different. This go-around as Orton started the last two encounters, but the wheel remains the same as the bell rings, and here we go. Referee Justin Carr is your official. Edge stepping up to the plate, looking to hang with Raymond Rowe from the United States, heavyweight champion, elbow and collar tie right there. As the winner of this match will advance to the to night one of WrestleMania, will they, get out, will they get out of the way clean? Oh, what a shot, a cheap shot, and Edge. That just pissed off Edge even further. And now what a lariat. That shot to the face just pissed off the rated R superstar, former WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Two former world champions and rated R KO would love nothing more than, than to get another crack. Oh, what a knee. What a knee by Raymond Rowe. What a lariat. Talking about Edge's accolades, Raymond Rowe and Hanson are on a mission to get to the top of the biz and bring honor and prestige to House Row. No, oh, I guess you could say that's a cheap, a cheap way to go as he just grabbed Edge by, by the hair. And now, uh oh, the strength of Raymond rolling in a deadlift German suplex. Row is feeling different. He wants to make sure that Edge knows that he's been in quite a war. 
whenever they are in that ring as he makes the tag to Hanson. And now, uh oh, oh, what a, what a gr standing Gronko Buster bot to probably just crush the ribs of Edge right there. Shot to the back of the head. Edge is in serious trouble. Edge started to match this go round as opposed to the other two times. But they team double, and once again they're pulling him by the hair. Jessica Carr going to have to get in it at some point to make sure that they keep off the hair as Edge is in serious trouble at this point. Oh, what a neck breaker. Sarah Rowe has been on a mission to make sure that her husband and her brother-in-arms, Hanson, win those tag team titles. They have spoken it into existence. Will they be able to let that plan, let that proclamation come to fruition? If they get past rated RKO, who is focused on oh, No, what a knee plus in the corner. And now, uh oh, Bronco Buster into the corner. Edge is, is he, he needs to make that tag. He needs to make that tag to Randy, Randy Orton. And Randy Orton is begging, pleading for Edge to make it. But Hanson is blocking the way. He is blocking the path. And Rowe took advantage. And Hanson got to get out of there because he has until the count of five to get out, or they will risk getting DQ'd. Edge in serious trouble. And now, uh oh. Bro. Oh, what a. What a belly to belly overthrow by Ro. Edge, he, he, he might. He gonna feel this in the morning. He gonna feel this in the morning because he knows he's been in the fight. Whether win or lose, he knows he's, gonna be, he's been in the fight. And now, uh oh. Raiders pop up into Thor's hammer. Float over. Just get down and make the count. Edge is out to World Raiders going to WrestleMania. Not just yet. Bro could not believe Edge kicked out of Thor's hammer. But it's neither here nor there. No way, Edge. Oh, he just took him down with that arm drag. A basic wrestling move. And now Randy Orton finally makes the tag. And now Orton is unleashed with that lariat. Orton. Beautiful drop kick. He might have just took this man. He might have just knocked the beard off him all the way. A cheap shot by Rowe. A cheap shot by Rowe. And now Hanson taking advantage. Oh, wait. Orton shifted the body weight. He shifted the body weight and planted Hanson. Hanson did not know where he was. And Rowe was reaching for the tag. But now Orton is feeling a little different. Orton feeling heavily different. And now, the strength of Orton with that Samoan drop. Orton is feeling, is just feeling, oh, now he's about to tap into that zone. Tap into that zone with the draping DDT. Sarah, oh, Sarah's about to panic on the outside because Hanson is about to meet the arcade. Nope. Oh, what a cross body by Hanson. Neither men. Oh, Hanson, Hanson was not expecting that. I was about to say, neither man was expecting this type of offense from Randy Orton. The Grizzled Vets, they are, they are making sure that you know that they can hang with the new generation as well as the old generation. And I'll wait. Oh, what has Orton got in store here? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, what a backbreaker from the second row. Row is begging for Hanson to make the tag as Edge is still on the outside recovering from an onslaught from both men. Oh, and another cross body. And the first one didn't break, the, uh, break a rib. I don't know what to tell you because that looked like it hurt. Hanson regained the control and now Rowe has him. Oh, what a knee to the end of clobbering blow to the back of the head. And now what a knife that's chopping out. Oh, what a discus form. And, and this man just went spaghetti legs. This man went spaghetti, get, spaghetti legs and Edge is begging for Orton to make the tag because he knows his partner is in serious trouble. Oh, what a, what a body slam. And now Roe from the second row letting Orton know whose house it is. And it's house row. What a knee drop. Three Profits, they, they got to be taking massive notes because both teams, they got to this point and now they are looking. What a belly.
belly to belly overthrow. This time to Randy Orton. Rowe is on a different level right now. He wants to punch his ticket to the to that tag team title match at WrestleMania. And now, uh oh, float over into the oh, what a knee! Rowe has been unleashed on Randy Orton. Is this gonna secure that position for the tag team title shot at WrestleMania? No, not just yet. And now Rowe. Oh, he slammed him by the neck. What is Rowe got going? Oh, he went for the knee drop, but nobody home right there. And now, oh, what a, what a European uppercut. Now Randy Orton. He is feeling it. He is setting it up because he knows what's at stake. Going for the lariat. Going for another one. Oh, ducks out of the way. Does Rowe. He had that scouted. Oh, went for a head, head, went for a head butt, but Orton had that scouting and went for another lariat. And a second one ducks out of the way into a, oh, what a scooping body slam. Orton. Edge got out of the way because he knew what was, what was happening next as he looked at his tag team partner connect with a draping DDT. No, oh, Randy Orton. He knows what he has in store right here. He tried to go for it with Hanson. Will he go for it on road this time as he's begging him? Oh, what an uppercut. He is telling him. No, wait. Roe. Oh, Roe. Roe has been unleashed. That just pissed off that trash talk. Just pissed him, pissed him off looking for the Viking knee. RKO! Orton bounced up and hit an impact for RKO and a cheap shot to Hanson. It's telling Orton. Telling Randy to take care of this one. Oh, you know what this is. Ro, he is about to meet another RKO. Nobody there to stop what happens next. Orton and Edge are going to WrestleMania. You can't take nothing away from the War Raiders. They brought their A game. I thought it was moments like the Thor's hammer. And even this, the Viking knee. This is where it all went, went to went to crap for, for the War Raiders. Oh, he went for the Viking knee, but connected with that RKO. And he connected with a second emphatic RKO. And just like that, like it or not, the Grizzle Vets rated RKO were determined to get that opportunity to run it back one more time as a team. And now the stage is set. The Street Profits reign will be challenged by rated RKO, who overcame a very game, War Raiders. Rated RKO win the tag team tournament. And the profits are next.